Hello everybody and welcome to Chess24 and welcome to yet another round of coverage of the British Championships. It's round seven, it was the rest day yesterday and we're now coming to the finishing stretch of the tournament. Uh, five more games to go, so still a lot of chess to be played, but the favourites are starting to make themselves known. And talking about favourites, on my left, I've got the lovely Fiona Stel Anthony. Hello, Lawrence. How are you? I'm very good. I'm very happy to be here with you. Did it's I... been a while. There you are. I got your name. <laughs> um, I got your name on the screen for everybody who didn't get my pronunciation right. How, how's, how's life? Life is good. I've been watching the tournament a bit, not as closely as mm. I would have wanted to because I had my best friend visiting over the weekend. So uh, just took a bit of a back seat, but I've been following the results, of course. I'm very happy um, people watching might or might not know that I regularly play in England in the uh, I'm part of the Chadleton team. I'm actually very happy and very honored to be the Chadleton captain. And I'm very happy to see my players doing well so far. So to. your players are... I have Mr. three players on the first two boards. Mr. Arkel, yes. Mr. Eggleston and Mr. Howell. Absolutely. Mm, they're not doing bad. In fact, why don't we uh, just give our uh, lovely viewers who perhaps, like you, have not been uh, following the tournament for the whole time, a quick rundown. Yep. Currently, there are three players on five points. Uh, number one seed, Mickey Adams. Number two seed, David Howe. And number... I don't know what seed Eggie is, but he's like... Oh, yeah, he's... he's let me check. We can check. Dave, David Eggleston. He's only seed, uh, seeded 16th. 16th seed, David Eggleston. Yeah. Everybody who uh, knows English chess knows Eggie, knows that he can play very good chess. Mm -hmm. And this tournament, he's shown that... He is in form. He's beaten Mark Hebden with a great game. And then yesterday... Beat John Ems. Beat John Ems in a crazy game and a beautiful finish. And means he's on not only the top score, but uh, he, with all due respect to Keith, has got a great pairing yeah. today as well. I mean, especially uh, David Eggleston, he's a very well-prepared player. Mm. And I think he's uh, a lot more dangerous with the white pieces. No offense to his mm. uh, black pieces opening. But uh, I, for example, like to give him white in important matches because, I, especially uh, in the Sicilians, he knows a lot. He likes to play it with both colors. So we see him open with e4. I very much doubt Keith will reply. Um, with C5. But these players know each other so well. I mean, they've been teammates uh, forever. They've played in the same tournaments over and over again. I, I don't know how many times they've faced each other, but I guess an awful lot of times. Oh yeah, for sure. They've played each other many times. And you know what's funny about this tournament? I haven't had uh, enough time to really follow the games, but the most I followed from the tournament was on Facebook, seeing what people wrote on Facebook. A uh, bit of banter, a bit of... And I saw Keith uh, wrote a couple of days ago. He hasn't played a Karo Khan yet in the tournament, I believe. No, he hasn't. And he was saying he would um, bring it out when people least expected mm. it. And there he goes, C5. And I just said yeah. a second ago, he wouldn't. <laughs> he wouldn't and do he's that. Played C5. Oh, wow. So, I mean, this is going to be interesting. David Eggleston is a an open Sicilian uh, player. He's been playing the open Sicilian for many years, so it'll be really interesting to see what Keith does. Yeah. So this is one board, but of course, game of the day, ladies and gentlemen, is the top two seeds, David Howe versus Mickey Adams, on board one, and they have already kicked off, and it's a Berlin, and we'll see how David, and he's played the very fashionable move, move pawn to d3, lot of success at top level recently with this move, um, Magnus Carlsen played a beautiful game against Wesley So just the other week with uh, in Bilbao, I think it was takes, takes, D takes C6, and I believe here the move Queen E2 directly. Although I do forget everything, so bear with me. Yeah. Um, I'm obviously counting on you for. Something like this. I think happened h3 bishop g5 a3 something like this and he went for a very quick b4 and he made wesley look very very silly indeed yeah. and um 
Of course, my boy Fabiano Caruana also had some great results with this anti-Berlin endgame move uh, recently. Um, so it's very much in fashion. And here, yeah, there are a number of ways white can play. They can also play with c3 mm -hmm. rather than taking. So question of style, question of mood, and we'll see what happens. It's going to be an interesting game. I'm going... Um, here is what approach uh, David's going to take to this game. I'm happy to see him open with e4. I think lately he's played more, maybe a bit more English openings, mm -hmm. starting with c4, knight f3. Um, yeah, I think it's going to be a very, very interesting clash, this one. Mm -hmm. uh, David, obviously, last year, he's had a bit of a slump recently mm -hmm. because he came very close to Mickey's rate, not very close, but reasonably close to Mickey's rating. Uh, last year when David was 27, 20 mm. plus. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Recently, it hasn't gone so well for him, but I believe he will be back. And I think today is his chance. I think it's been a while since David won the British Championships as well. Um, not that long. Are you sure? Yeah. Well, in, in either, in any case, also Mickey, it's been a while since he played. So today really a big clash. Um, Actually, that was one of the things I was going to do in preparation for today's show. Look uh, at the previous let's winners. Let's have a very yeah. quick look. And the last time David won it was, was just two years ago. Yeah, I thought I thought he okay, won it a couple so he, years ago. Yeah, oh, he showed first. Yeah, with Jonathan Hawkins. That's I was right. surprised Jonathan uh, is not playing this year. Yeah. He's the defending champion. He won it sharedly with uh, David two years ago, and not a Chadderton player. Um, but yeah. I don't quite know why Jonathan is not there, if I'm totally honest. Me um, neither, but he already he already told us at the last four in Seattle weekend in May he wouldn't be playing, so okay. he did decide that a while back. Uh, Mickey Adams won this tournament last time in 2011 in Sheffield, and in 2010 in Canterbury he played both tournaments, so that was uh, both, both years there. And the time he won it before that was back in 19... 97 well, along with Matthew yeah. Sadler I remember that very well so um, well we'll see we'll see what happens just to update you on that game David did take and then he played the move which is actually of course the right move Knight BD2 this is the fashionable move um, it's kind of a move which it's quite flexible because it's also directed against Bishop G4 you're allowed to take back with the Knight and on top of that, this knight can often jump to c4, pressurizing this. And it can even come to b3 in some mm -hmm. lines. It really depends how black sets out. I've seen a lot of these positions in Fabiano's games. And, well, I, uh, yeah, it's very interesting stuff. In the eggy game... I was going to say, uh, moves are coming in thick and fast here. And I'm still very surprised by Keith's opening choice. He's one of those players, he doesn't prepare very much and he doesn't... I mean, it's not a secret that he doesn't prepare much. Mm. He's everyone who knows Keith uh, knows he rarely ever prepares. So now I wonder if he if he has done some specific um, opening preparation for this game, or whether he just decided to challenge Eggy here. Well, I think it's probably a bad idea just to challenge Eggy, which yeah. he will have looked at this. This is a very well known position, of course, ladies and gentlemen. This is a uh, Taimanov uh, main line with bishop e3 and castle's queenside and here black's got a whole bunch of moves knight a5 knight e5 even knight e7 so we'll see what keith does but kind of surprising he he must have had a look at something mm -hmm. i think otherwise this would be really crazy yeah. yeah um we do have uh of course and Pramod in the chat wants to know, I was going to say earlier, you're mm. here to take us through the openings. Um, while I'm keeping an eye on the chat, I'm also keeping an eye on the Twitter feed. So if you have any questions, any comments, mm. uh, I'll be keeping an eye on the chat and on the Twitter feed, hashtag C24Live. And there was a, ch a question for you from Pramod. Lawrence, did you ever play the Berlin Defense in a tournament again? Did I ever play the tournament in a tournament game, does he mean to say? Or? Yeah. Um, yeah, played the Berlin a few times, got good results with it. Maybe played it two or three times. So yeah. Okay, let's yeah. let's see what else we have. I'm very happy to see Javanka uh, so high up as well. Always, of course, happy to see girls uh, doing well, competing with the strongest. 
uh, men players out there. And yesterday, also during the rest day, uh, there was a blitz uh, tournament, mm -hmm. and I saw only a few of the players. I think it's the probably the right approach not to play. I mean, you want to. It's a very long tournament, eleven rounds. You mm -hmm. want to save some energy. But for example, Keith was playing. Keith. Right. Keith Arco, um Who won it? Uh, who won it? <laughs> Uh, Amit uh, Ghazi. Oh, Amit yeah. turned up, did he? Okay, wow. And Tom Randall turned up as well. Oh, wow. So, yeah. That's quite a journey just for a... Uh, was it Blitz or Rapid? Blitz. Mm hmm Okay, well, well done to Amit. He's a very good Blitz player. And Alex Nogal is asking for my prediction for... Th do you want to do a quick prediction round? Maybe the first four boards? Yeah, sure. Um... I'm going to go draw Hal Adams, 1-0 uh, Eggy Keith, 0-1 uh, in Peter Wells versus Gawain Jones, and I'm going to go 1-0 in Nicholas Burt versus Yvonne Kahuska. Okay, I'm going to go draw, 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 and 1-0 in Nick Burt against okay. Ivanka. Interesting. Okay. But I was wondering how far uh, Eggy is from the GM norm. Well, it's only round seven, it's so it's too seven. difficult to say, but on five out of six, of For course. example, if he wins today, well, uh, if he he'll wins, be very close. If he wins today, probably, probably he only needs, needs a draw. draw. Yeah. So that's why it's such a big round for Eggy, because he, uh, yeah, he's in such a great position. And... Uh, just to quickly look at the position in Wells versus Gawain Jones... Should point out, even though there are three people on five, there are one, two, two, four, six, eight. There are nine people on four and a half, going all the way down to board seven with Chris Ward versus Peter Batchelor. So these guys are still very much in the running. Mm -hmm. They only need um, a few wins and they can be in first position. So a lot of people, very close tournament this year. Nobody is on six out of six or five and a half out of six, that's normally what happens. And Alex Nogal is saying, I'm in a draw mood. <laughs> it's true. I would probably have predicted 1-0 in Eggleston against, against Keith, but I saw that Keith has been following quite a lot of our commentary. I saw he um, corrected you on a few instances or tried to correct you, so I didn't dare predicting 1-0 there. <laughs> well, I mean, I was just giving my personal opinion <laughs> that Keith decided to uh, disagree with and that's fine but um, you know maybe I'm just too I don't know maybe I'm too cynical or something <laughs> um, so what happened here in the opening this is just a very standard c3 Sicilian Gawain has played 2d5 already this tournament but decided to go <coughs> knight f6 which is the other, the main, other main move, move. yeah against Keith and uh, sorry against Peter e5 knight d5 knight f3 and uh, e6 actually one of the craziest games I've ever played I mm. drew against Pete Wells with white and it was also a c3 Sicilians mm -hmm. just reminds me of that yeah I mean this is just one of the main lines in here white normally goes d4 and black can take and go d6 with a very standard C3 Sicilian, so not much going on. We'll come back to that. Let's go to the Nicholas Pert game, because Nick Pert, playing Yvonne Kahuska, has played a line that I've played quite a lot, but strange for Nick. Uh, maybe he was slightly concerned, because Yvanka is so well prepared in uh, the Karakhan that he just wanted to get some kind of a game with two Bishop F4. She's written a book on the Karakhan as well. Uh, sorry, the Karakhan, the, the Slav, is what I'm trying yeah. to say. Yeah. She's written a book on the Karakhan. She knows the Slav very well. So, um, very interesting to see. And they go down a pretty well-known line. And basically, this isn't... White's idea is not to challenge mm -hmm. Black in the opening here. Nick just wants to get a position. Um, and outplay Yvanka. But it's great to see, as you said, it's great to see Yvanka... Uh, still uh, in the mix. Um, I don't think she's going to win it, of course, but um, I think she will win the women's. the women's prize. Yeah. Although there is now also Akshaya, she's uh, who's 
really progressed a lot. She's what? She's almost 2300. Yeah, Akshaya is... A teammate um, of yours, Guilford. Yeah, and she is... What is she on now? I thought she was on three. Oh, there she is. No, two she's on half. two and a half. She's having a bit of a yeah. rough tournament, uh, Akshaya, which can happen. So we won't see her challenging this year, but very young and very promising so i think she's on the on the english uh, olympia team she must be yeah she's absolutely going to be interesting i think it's her first olympia that did she play in tromsø i think she played she did she play in yeah okay. i think she played already if i remember correctly so uh yeah so we'll see this is a, just a very dull position mm. at the moment so we'll come back to that this one I thought it was interesting because these players, although they do play on board five, uh, this is an assigned board. So uh, Mark Hebden, I read he's been complaining a bit about the uh, lightning in the playing hall. So he's assigned to board five. He always plays on board five. Oh, that's the reason why yeah. he's on board five. I didn't realize why that was the reason, but I thought it might just be because he's the fifth seed. <laughs> no. Um, no, he's been assigned to board five because of uh, lightning. Lighting. Lighting. Yeah. 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 Oh, interesting. Okay. Well. And I mean, this is a tough game with only yeah. uh, four points yeah. playing just in time. Yeah, it's not a good pairing yeah. for Mark. Uh, we do have a very standard line. In fact, Eggy played exactly the same thing, if I remember correctly, against Mark. Queen d7. I think Eggy here went knight f1. Although I could be mistaken. Mm hmm. Something very similar, maybe c3 was the move. Um, and we get this position where White's setup is kind of unusual. He puts the knight on d2, he leaves the bishop on c4. But uh, we'll see what Justin Tan, always very well prepared, has up his sleeve because immediately here. Uh, my question is... And the question from Pramod is, can you take on b7? Well, that's that's it. Maybe, I probably wouldn't do it here, because if I take on b7 immediately... What if I... Yeah, knight a5, queen a6. I mean, it is possible, takes, takes. But, um, what, well, I can also do something similar by taking here first. And after whatever, f takes e6, I can do the same. So the question is, can I actually take there? Problem is, probably I can. Probably I can get away with it. So I wonder what Mark has I mean, up his sleeve. The players have played very quickly, so mm. it could very well be that they're both still following their preparations here at this point. Possibly. Maybe his idea is that after takes, takes something like this, he wants to go d5 and open up. Oh yeah, did we miss that? Queen takes Ooh. b7, rook b8, queen a6, rook b6? Is our queen just trapped? Right. Well, no, because we can take here and go queen c4. Mm -hmm. In the worst case. But, um, you know, it'll be interesting to see if yeah. Justin does take that pawn. Anyway. Uh, moving through the games, we've got Palliser versus Gormali, another very interesting, very interesting round actually, because these guys played a lot of games against each other, of course, and we have a King's Indian. So uh, Gormali is also a very well-known uh, Grunfeld player, so he could have gone in for this, but there have been some lines here which perhaps he didn't like, so he went in for a, a strict King's Indian, and this is the H3 system, which is Pretty well known here, the move e5 uh, or the move knight a6 are most common. Uh, e5, d5, sorry, here, knight h5, knight a6, a5, all typical King's Indian plans. But Danny went for c5, so he actually went in for a, a more um, standard kind of Maroxy position where he's allowed white to construct this Maroxy bind in the center and we have quite a standard position after these moves where well remains to be seen what mm -hmm. happens rook 81 knight d7 very very typical stuff 
black will try and exchange these bishops in order to get a knight to c5 or put a queen on b6. I mean, Richard is, of course, famously a very, uh, very good ter theoretician. Right, theoretician, <laughs> yeah. Can't speak. Um, he's been the second of Gawain Jones for a long, long time now. So, yeah, another, I mean, there are a lot of interesting encounters today. Indeed. And one last of the top games which we'll cover is the game Chris Ward versus the very talented mm -hmm. youngster Peter Batchelor. We have a very old school um, Queen's Gambit declined and depending on what Peter, Peter does here, be interesting to see. Is Chris thinking about castling Queenside like in the good old days or is he just going to go E3 and mm -hmm. Bishop D3? Remains to be seen. Maybe even Peter's thinking about going knight a6 here to um, hit the queen with tempo. And if a3, play a move like c6 and develop the knight like so, because the knight can get to e6 very quickly. The reason I mention that is because in a lot of lines, what white, uh, what black does is he tries to maneuver the knight round like this, so he mm. might get there even quicker. Well, he plays c6. That's... Uh, very standard move, so we'll see what uh, Chris does to follow up. But very solid from Peter Batchelor. Right. Can we maybe just have a look at uh, Tamash games? Tamash, Tamash game? Fodor, yeah. yeah. Another Chadleton player. It's interesting to see. So what are the rules to play? Because Tamash, he is Hungarian, but he lives in London. So yeah, if you, you live have, in the UK... Yeah, if you live in the UK for more than a year, okay. you qualify. So he's been living there for more than a year and qualifies. Yeah. So, as is the case for uh, Justin Tan, right? And a5 on the board, another very standard kind of uh, Nidorf where White has gone for this early a4 a5 plan, been seen numerous times. A more positional way of playing, White doesn't try and get in some mm -hmm. kind of attack on the quick <clears throat> king side, just wants to play more classically. And he's going to say, well, I'm rated 200 points more than you. I'm going to try and outplay you. Okay, Basically. let's maybe update our top board, top clash, the top two mm. seeds. David Howell against Mickey Adams. And someone was saying that knight b6, so the last uh, move here, yeah, that is a novelty, apparently. That is a very interesting move. Because if we go back one... We look at the database. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> we'll see the game Giri versus So from where? Where was that from? That's uh, I thought I recognised the Grand Chess Tour where I was. So this this position here had already been played. It's also very familiar to the position that uh, my boy Fabiano got against uh, Hikaru Nakamura mm -hmm. back in the candidates where he, he won a great game. Castled long, launched his pawns. There was a, a launch of Hikaru's pawns, but Hikaru wasn't quick enough and Fabiano won an important game for the tournament. But the move knight b6 is uh, a pure novelty, it seems. And uh, David, I imagine, will spend some time here knowing David. Yeah, exactly. How is David Times manager? Uh, David's time uh, it's management. It's not been great. It's been the same as always. He's been in time trouble in a few games, but somehow has managed to survive against Keith. He was mm -hmm. completely lost. Yeah, I saw that. Yeah. Um, oh, H Hikaru played nine f six here. That could be true. Something like this. Um, was it nine f eight? Something along these lines, so I can't remember. Which game? Uh, the Caruana's game against uh, mm -hmm. Hikaru. But and uh, Smooth Baron is asking uh, if knight a5. So uh, let's yeah. have a look at David's possibilities here. Yeah, I would definitely say knight a5 is the first move you look at um, with white because clearly black can't move this bishop because of knight takes mm -hmm. b7. So black would have to spend another tempo looking after this pawn with rook b8. And um, now it's a question of does white want to castle kingside or queenside? Both look very reasonable. Um, but is there, does black have to go rook b8 if I go if you go back a move? 
I was wondering if I could possibly bring my knight away. It's a lot of it's a lot of moving the knight. Yeah, you because just then the I was to going B6. to maybe go b6, but then c6 is hanging as yeah. well. So no, basically you have yep. to go rook b8 here with black, and then the onus is really on white. What what is he going to do? Is he going to castle long? Is he going to castle short? But also, what's the knight now? Is the knight now going to retreat to b3? It or? can actually. The knight often ends up on b3 in these lines. So, mm. I mean. Black's knight is hardly, maybe Black's knight is the idea is to actually to come to a4 just to uh, molest this uh, pawn on b2, but it's unclear exactly. I mean, clearly M Mickey has prepared this, so I'll be curious to see yeah. exactly what he wants to do. By the way, taking on e5 um, doesn't work, probably for a very simple reason like f6 and then, or... Is there another clear refutation of this move? Is it a move like bishop d6 or something like that? Um, there's a reason why you can't take on e5. Reason. Well, I mean, even f6, yeah. the, the worst case, you'd have to come back and takes, takes. And I think here you have, you're running mm -hmm. into all kinds of moves like bishop f5 and just uh, very bad. So. Also, to let you know, I don't know what you and Nicholas and you and Jan have mm. uh, done so far, but just to let you know out there, we're not using any engines, so... We're not. We might have to at some point, though, because uh, the... I know what the crowd are like. They'll say, you're rubbish. You don't know <laughs> how to play. It's true, but... And Pragma is saying that taking on e5 is possible, but he doesn't think David would check Mickey's preparation. I think that's a very valid point. He's not going to take yeah. it. He's going to play knight a5. The only other move he might consider is the move knight e3, which... Um, is very plausible and very typical in this line because mm. the knight often aims for f5. So either knight a5 or knight e3 will be David's move. But I position. think your prediction about David sinking into a long, long thing here is going to come through. So maybe we'll let this off for now. See what Eggy has done is in his game against Keith. Yeah, well, um, in this position, well, this is just a very well-known game. I said after f3, Black's got a number of knight moves. Uh, Keith played knight e5, and Eggy went knight to b3. And if you check the online uh, opening tree available via Chess24, if you are a premium member, um, you'll see that there have been about 800 games in this line. By far the most popular move is the natural b5. Nothing else really makes sense here because white in a lot of uh, positions wants to go bishop d4 and a3. Sorry, that's a3 here. Even a3 straight away sometimes. So even a, even an exchange like this mm -hmm. sometimes, although if black has time to go b5, he's normally doing okay. So, I mean, black's going to go b5 here. I'm, I'm pretty sure Keith will do this. And here, a load of games, queen e1, king b1, or queen d4. I mean, I have to say, and it's the last time I'm going to say this for today, but I'm still... I just, I can't comprehend Keith's opening choice. He's already spent 15 minutes. Aggie's just spent... I mean, I'm sure Aggie is still following his preparation. Keith must know this as well, but it's more like he will have to remember. I really struggle to imagine he will have done some big specific preparation for this game. So I, I wonder what well, his plan is. We'll see, but um, I'm trying to get... Why does that... It says I'm not premium, really. If I'm not premium... Well, that was even Jan's account, wasn't let's it? Let's try and log in. <laughs> um, so Law is just trying to log in because as a premium member, you have uh, access, of course, to the whole database. So that's what yeah. we're trying to do. Which is quite sad if I can't get <laughs> get this loaded up. Um, so if I go to... I'm just trying to work out... Keith hasn't played a move yet. And weird. It's not letting me... So very weird. strange. It's very strange. Yeah. I am logged in and it's still not letting me. But anyway. Uh, we've got a tweet from Casey Jones say, shouting out Eggy. Eggy does have a fair few fans, doesn't he? Oh, yeah. He's some character. If you don't know Eggy, then you should. 
He's he's a character, that's for sure. Whether you should know him or not is another <laughs> question. Uh, okay, and remember, you can also get in touch with us via Twitter. Twitter yeah. yeah, you can get in touch with us. Hashtag C24Live or... If you'd prefer, follow us directly, tweet at us directly. I am uh, at Lawrence Trent I am. So that's a bit, bit long. And this is at Caliste28, yeah. full one word. And Jack Smith is saying he's surprised everyone's calling uh, David Eggie nowadays. In the older days, he was known as Daggers and his twin brother, is his twin mm, brother Thomas, mm. was Daggers. Maybe because Thomas more or less retired. Yeah. Now there's just one Eggy. There's only one Eggy. There's only one Eggy. There are two, but there's really only one Eggy. <laughs> um, and yeah, Eggy spent close to zero time on this. And uh, oh, wonderful. My uh, assistant, my beautiful assistant has just come in to get me. It's a miserable yeah, so day sorry. here. It's a miserable day here in Hamburg. It's raining and cold and, and wet. It's very often, I mean, I'm probably complaining too much about the weather here, but it really... It's incredible, it's isn't incredible, it? It's incredible, yeah. It's, it's just gross. And it's supposed to be August 1st, it's supposed to be the height of the yeah. summer. And what do we have? Rain and cold. Yeah. Uh, let's check the chat. Uh, Jan and Lawrence. Ooh, You're not that's an old chat. <laughs> For some uh, something reason, is wrong, I something think, is very, zero. something is very, very wrong. And Let me keep an eye on the chat. I'm doing that, um, and maybe move on to another game. Kiefer still thinking. I'm just, I'm not. <laughs> I can't. You want to make this work, do you? I just can't get it working. I mean, I'm just, I feel like I've been trapped. <laughs> but it okay. doesn't matter too much. I should focus on the games for now. <laughs> okay, let's let's focus on the games. It doesn't matter. We don't need theory. Uh, Peter Wells, Gawain Jones. Well, we saw C D C D and B six. This is another very standard way of playing, apart from D six. Gawain has gone for a more optimistic setup. He wants a Fianchetto Rapido, and after Knight C three, he rightly took <coughs> took and played Bishop B seven. Excuse me. Gesund height. That's what you get with the weather here. It really is, yeah. yeah. Um, I mean, this isn't so standard for this opening, is it? Uh, it's, it's been this seen position? a few. Yeah, it's been seen a few times for sure. I, I recall this position, and White basically says, "Well, at the moment, I've got a nice central formation." That said, my bishop is mm -hmm. cutting through here, and this pawn on c3 can be weak. Yeah. I mean, if I were white, I would already get excited here. You know, my just style, I like to get some attack going against the opposite king. So I would hope that black castles kingside, which he probably will do. I mean, he well, doesn't will, yeah. really have a choice. I'd go bishop d3, bishop c2, queen d3, especially now, now the knight's gone. Very direct. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> no playing around. Well, in the meantime, after bishop d3, I might go... I mean, black can always tickle you with queen yeah. c7. You just let it go, right? You just don't I'm care about sure. that guy. Can I go a bit sure. I'll you can go with here. bishop? I'll start bishop d2. Of course yeah. you can. Now I might go d6. Castle. And, okay, I'll go knight d7. Just don't want to castle. Okay, I'll go rookie one. Yep. Now, first. Firstly, I can probably take this guy. Okay, I'll take. With the knight? Yes. If I take. I'll take with the rook. I'll go bishop d6 and I'll say, ha ha! And I'll go rook h5. <laughs> rook h5! <laughs> Counter attacking. Well, yeah, but your rook's a bit misplaced here. Yeah, why? Why? Because. I mean, no, I can see that, but you're going to have to do something with your king as well. Yeah, but the good news is I've been flexible, you see, so maybe I'll go I long. doubt that. Really? Yeah. In this position, I'd be very, for example, after g6. Okay, rook h3. Yeah, I'd be very tempted to go okay. here. Okay. And I'll say... Now I'll immediately go a4. <laughs> yeah, you can, you can try and batter me down, but I've also got, you know, stuff going on. 
I don't think this is going to happen, ladies and gentlemen, but this is the yeah, sort very of... Very unlikely. I mean, I, maybe I don't even have to go G6. Anyway, yeah. this isn't going to happen. But basically what I'm saying is, in this line with black, you don't want to walk into white's attacking potential uh, without uh, any resistance. So you might see Gawain developing his king side first, working yeah. out where he wants to put his stuff. Um, in the game Pert versus Huska, uh, Nick played the standard move c3, e6, and queen b3. This has all been seen many, many times. And the move queen to c8 by Yvanka. The problem here with black is you'd like to go queen b7, mm -hmm. but that runs into bishop b5, mm -hmm. and knight e5 is an annoying threat. Yeah. So queen c8 adequately defends the pawn. Knight e5 was played. Yvanka took this guy. And now Nick will take with the bishop. I'm sort of... 100%. And again, we got a position where there's not much venom in this for white after even bishop e7. Why did you uh, exclude taking with the pawn? Well, just because suddenly my bishop, it doesn't make too much sense. I mean, my bishop had a diagonal, it was controlling. Yeah, but also I... now, after knight d7, I'm getting hit. Yeah. I was thinking I could maybe bring my own knight to d5, but... To Probably. d4. Yeah, sorry. But it just can't get there very quickly. Yeah. I mean... And have to remove my queen. It's just taking a lot of moves. Nick will take yeah. with the bishop there, I'm pretty certain. Um, and he did, and he does. And now I expect Yvanka... She can even go knight d7 mm -hmm. here. That's a very reasonable move. Because you are hitting the bishop. And if bishop b5, now you can just kick with a6. Mm. And something like this, followed by f6 and moving the bishop, is is absolutely fine. So knight d7 wouldn't surprise me at all. And Nick just doesn't have anything here. There's no advantage for white. White can go back to g3, and you can go bishop e7. You castle, and happy days. It's just equal position. And by the way, just to quickly come back, we don't yeah. need to go get there, but the game between Egelslin and Keith Argel, McCurley is informing us, although you still can't yeah. access them, we'll have to look into that uh, yeah. on our break, but McCurley was saying that yeah, there's still 821 games in the database tab after yeah. 10 Knight B3, and Keith is still thinking, which I think doesn't bode well. At all. Well, the, uh, the good news for Keith in this position is basically there's a limited amount of moves yeah, you... but whatever move he plays will run into knowledge by David. And if Keith has to think here in a position where there are 800 move, 800, move, games, uh, 800 yeah. games, that means he... I mean, he, he will probably be familiar with the position. Like, he has an amazing uh, general knowledge of chess and of openings. But, I mean, this is very practical chess. I don't know why he played this. I have yeah. to say, I'm kind of curious. Maybe he can explain after the game. Yeah. Um, Mr. Dodgy is in the chat. Dover Beach is in the chat. Everyone is in the chat. We love the chat. Uh, Ilya Zaragatsky is also. Yeah, I was very looking strong. at this before we started. The open in uh, Trinidad. Trinidad. Yeah. What a great open that is. The Trinidad and Tobago <laughs> Masters. I'm going to have to get there one day. That sounds great. Um,. So what we got? Well, we got to move in David Howard. Okay, so this is interesting. Oh, so David didn't go to A5. Well, he, I said he'll either go yeah. to E3 or A5. He went to E3, which is not a surprise, if I'm honest, because Knight F5 is in the air, G4. A, and Mickey has played very quickly the move A5. So this is a, a move with multi-purpose move, apart from gaining space, stopping ideas like B4. Mm -hmm. He might just say to White, okay, well, if you want to go and launch your pawns, be my yeah. guest, but where are you going to put your king? Because if you castle queenside, mm -hmm. I'm already got a bit of a head start on attack. Mm -hmm. It's a very interesting move by Mickey. And I think today is a game where David will have to be very careful with his time management because, I mean, he's extremely strong when he's low on time, but being low on time against uh, an average 25, 2600 uh, Grandmaster is something different than being very low on time against Mickey Adams. Because Mickey Adams will most likely find the most precise uh, moves. And having no time there is going to be very dangerous. Yeah, I agree. And David already 20 minutes down on the clock. So... 
Kind of understandable. Um, this isn't the chat, then. This is in the chat. I'm looking at your chat. <laughs> You're looking at the chat from like two days ago. <laughs> oh, here we are. I'm back. And do you have the database? We might do. Ooh. Yeah, it looks like it's working again. I got it working. That's... No. <laughs> no, it's not working. It doesn't love me. All right. Um, that's besides the point. So, yeah, so we've got... Let's check out Gormali, uh, sorry, Palace of Gormali. Because we lo last saw it after a5, rook ad1, threatening e5. So knight d7 takes, takes, and now bishop g4. Curious move by Palliser. What's that move all about? Does he want to transfer the knight via e2? Is he freeing Maybe, but after knight e5, yeah. what's the idea? Um, does he want to get, he probably wants to give up the... Bishop, yeah, I, I don't imagine. think he cares about the. This is a bad bishop, so yeah. he'd be quite happy to give it up. Okay, but so knight e2. Knight e2, this looks all so wrong. I mean, what do you do after h5? Yeah, yeah okay. That no squares. Good. Not knight e2, but maybe he wants to go. I F4, don't know, knight F... d5? Maybe? Can I go f4? Is that crazy? It's not crazy, but you immediately have to calculate whether I can just take this pawn. Mm hmm. Looks like I can take this pawn if I'm honest. Doesn't look like that's sufficient. Also, because knight e3 is coming. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, what's the idea here by Richard Pallas? I'm kind of slightly mystified by this. And knight e5 is on the board, of course. Ah, maybe, right. Maybe he wants to go here. Maybe this is his idea to go c5. That's very, very interesting. Very, very interesting. Huh. This is a curious idea where mm. black is pinned, can't play moves like queen b6. And actually, this is this is a tad unpleasant, actually. Okay, so what if I take on g4 mm -hmm. and go queen d c8 or d6? Okay, but I think I'm just going to be happy. Mm. Okay, I take back. But now the minimum is I can play a move like f3 or... G5, let's mm. try F3. And you're left with this mm. horrible weakness and dark squares. and Yeah, that's not what I wanted. Yeah, this isn't what you want. Yeah. So I think this is Palace's idea. If so, it's a very interesting idea. Mm. By the way, in Tan versus Hebden, we got what we were looking at. Justin did take the pawn. Mm. Wow. And after Queen A6, well, Rook B6, Queen C4 seems okay. So Mark played d5, now rook b6 is a serious threat. After which Justin very calmly played the move a5, stopping rook b6. And now there's... crazy game. And so white is a pawn up, and his objective is to consolidate. Basically, he's mm -hmm. undeveloped on the queen side. If he can get his queen safe and develop, he's just going to be mm -hmm. a pawn up. Whereas black hasn't got much going. Is Mark going to develop the bishop to c5 to... Look at f2. That wouldn't surprise me at all. Um, I mean, he will have to um, also worry about getting his queen back into the game. So how is he going to do that? Play d4 eventually? Uh, white. White might have a very simple plan of going b4, b5, actually. That might even be really... Yeah. And people in the chat uh, really seem to dislike uh, Mark's position already. Well, I mean, he's a pawn down. There's mm. no immediate compensation. I don't quite see how he plans to proceed here. So, yeah, you would have to prefer Justin. And yeah. Justin can also develop the bishop like that if he needs to. So if bishop c5, I'm just wondering, does this work? Giving up the bishop? Does that secure... Yeah, that, that seems to work. Or does it? Maybe uh, it doesn't. Have to take? Yeah. And I was thinking Can if I, I go it? here. Mm -hmm. Bishop a3. I don't know, by a thread. So mm. I wonder what Justin's going to do after bishop c5. Maybe, maybe even this is possible. And what if I start with d4? When? Uh, instead of taking on e5 after bishop c5? 
Oh, no. D4 no, no, here. sorry. I, I was it. going to for that. But you can do this. That's definitely possible. Yeah. Oh, still, so let's just go back. Uh, if I go... I'm tired today. So if I go D4... With After black. bishop C5. Okay, I'll and just take, take And I go E5. Mm -hmm. I don't know, I feel like you're yeah. treading yeah. Okay. on thin ice here. So, uh... And Promet uh, is wondering if this is opening preparation for Mark or whether he's bluffing. Um, well, the thing is Mark's already had this position, so... But one thing I know about Mark is that... He, Mark is more of a player of structure and ideas in mm -hmm. positions rather than exact moves and i yeah. think this is a position where you require very long concrete calculation and unfortunately i don't feel like mark has gone deep enough into this position and um, i was just looking uh, at the result because someone in the chat was saying mm. justin has already played the top three seeds which is true just looking at justin's uh, results yeah. so he started with three wins and then he drew david howard gawain jones and then yeah. on saturday he lost to mickey adams but still yeah very impressive uh, well i mean he's on tournament. uh plus two and and we were saying as well on for a norm yeah, as well absolutely not the best of pairings for mark on four points as we mentioned at the start of the show yeah, Mark did play bishop c5, which is the move I expected. Mm. So the question is, can you go b4 here? Oh, can you go knight e5? Or knight e5. Why can't I go knight e5 here? Am I going crazy? Maybe I can. Maybe, though, after takes, takes... Do you want to use a quick cheat moment and see what the engine has to say? No, I expect this that is this, is, this is probably what Mark will do if yeah. this happens. And then it's difficult for me to defend d4. Mm -hmm. Okay, let's quickly look at the engine. I'm very curious to see how it evaluates. We can't. We haven't got oh, it. we can't. No. Oh, so we can't even cheat. We're not even cheating. This yeah. is just pure, raw, analytical ability. <laughs> Um, From the corner of my eye, I see David Harris still thinking after a5. It's going to be very interesting to keep an yeah. eye on his clock today. Oh, and Mr. Dodgy is suggesting after knight e5, bishop f2. Yeah, also very typical. Um, something like this, but I was just wondering, is this enough? d4. And yeah, I, I'm always... Quite, I always quite like these positions for white because your knights are quite short of ideas and squares and this is hanging and I only need a few moves and I am a pawn up still. I don't think he will go knight e5. He, and imagine knight of is saying b4, bishop takes b4, c takes, knight takes, queen takes a7, rook a8 is awkward but don't cheat and find the hole in this. Rook a8, well apart from the fact knight e5 is in the position Probably just a move. Um, knight a5 isn't. Oh, it is. Knight yeah. e5, queen mm. d6. Oof. Still very complicated. Don't know. Is the honest I. Why, why is it so. Aren't we just a piece of? As we're going to lose an exchange? But... Um, are we just a piece up? Mm, seems like it. Can yeah, but I mean, where do we put our queen? Queen e3? Yeah, and then knight c2. And, uh, yeah. And he wins this guy, huh? And I can't even try. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So there's a slight problem here after rook a8. And if queen c5, then that runs into knight takes d3. Yeah, but then at least we get the knight. Yeah, but I mean, is it so clear, that a position like this? Okay, maybe we need to go, yeah. couldn't we? Yeah. I don't know, yeah. is it clear? This? What's the pawn count? Pawn, e well, he's got, he's got six, now we've got four. Now it's two, but <laughs> look at your e-pawns. 
Yeah, I know. What's this? The Irish Pawn Center? It is a very <laughs> Irish Pawn Center. That said, I'm not sure. Uh, the engines say plus two in this line, apparently. So the engines like this for white. Could be. Could be good for white. But, you know, yep. Justin's going to have to calculate that. Um, that's what we got very quickly. Chris Ward against Peter Batchelor. Wow, we had, after C6, E3, Mr. Batchelor took advantage of the fact that he could go knight e4 here. Takes, takes, bishop d3 and f5. So mm -hmm. he is uh, cementing that knight. But when you play f5 in these structures, of course, you immediately make this bishop worse off. And after a move like castles, um, is Peter going to put a knight here? He also gives away this square. Ooh, random arrows. And there are all kinds of ways to play mm. on the other squares here. Minority attack is still possible. So I think Chris is going to be pretty happy with this position because it is just a very standard position. But Talking of Chris's, I just saw my good friend Chris Duncan down there. What is it, 410? Can Chris we Duncan. go down a bit, have a look at some more random... Chris Duncan is playing Dietmar Kolbus. Jan's best friend from Germany. He's not actually Jan's best friend. <laughs> Dimar is a resident of Isle of Man and therefore qualifies. And I like Dimar's position very much. He's got a reversed Sicilian. Mm -hmm. And he's got a beautiful bishop already on B2. And Chris has to be careful that yeah. he doesn't uh, lose the thread here too much. Yeah, maybe I didn't pick the most exciting game, so let's move one board to the side and go to Richard Pert against Martin Brown. That looks quite interesting. What's going on here? Um, yeah, this is an interesting game. This is a French Tarash. For all of you who are bored of me saying it, I'm going to say it again. I did a series on this for Chess24, so if you are a premium member, like, let's see who's premium, Pramod or... Mr. Dodgy or Nippon Kaka and Alex Noble. If you are like all of these geniuses and you are <laughs> premium, you can watch my full series. And even Anish Giri has watched my series and said it was very good. Anish actually came up to me and said, your, your Tarish series? Really, really good. And that was a big compliment because yeah. I put a lot of work into it. So um, against Bishop E7, I think in the Tarish series, actually, I recommend the move... Um, E5, with the idea that after C5, C3, Knight C6, there's a curious move. The move Bishop D3 looks like an odd kind of move, because after takes takes, why can't Black take on D4? Well, because White's got the cheeky move Queen G4, taking advantage of the fact that the Knight and the Pawn are on pre. That's the line I recommend. Instead, Richard went in for a more standard. Uh, line which transverses what, to what's called the universal system and after castles the move g5 is very well known a5 is also a very well known move rook e1 takes takes queen b6 and now knight b1 in fact um, some very famous games I think there was a very famous Gormali game in this line as well against Thomas Rendell where it went takes takes here knight c3 and um, of course, you can't play knight takes e5 because of the cheeky bishop b5 check, and we win the queen on the next move. So knight c3, queen b6. I think the idea is that bishop c5 is actually a mistake because of the very unexpected move knight b5. And I'm very happy to welcome Tom Rendon. Oh, the Thomas is here. Thomas, I thought, had a game in this against Danny. Was it Thomas? Well, he, Thomas is saying, isn't uh, 14 bishop e3, does he mean this game? 14 oh, bishop e3 right. considered After Queen stronger B6. these days. Yeah, I'm just illustrating that the move bishop c5 surprisingly runs into knight b5. You give up this pawn on f2, king h1, and the problem is this queen runs out of squares very quickly. So after queen b6, yes, bishop e3 is considered uh, a very strong move. I think that's the move Gormali actually played against him. So was that the game, Randall Gormali, the game Tom is referring to? 
I he believe so. He won a very nice game in that line, in the bishop d3 line. I know, in the bishop d3 line. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, bishop e3, and then the queen can go back. Uh, d4 is not good for, I think, just knight a4. And black struggles to keep hold of this pawn. So and Tom is saying that Gormelli against Gary Krillin was with Bishop c5, and he drew a game against Danny with Queen. There we six. go. That's good memory from me. Yep. I'm happy about that. Um, so let's see what happened in the game instead. Yeah. So Queen b6 was played, and now Queen g4 by Richard Pert. hit in this pawn immediately. Um, I think this is also, I think I've also had this line a few times. I think I once had a game against Grandmaster Ivan Farago with white in this position after castles. Bishop h6. You can just go g6 here with black. Very typical exchange sacrifice. Mm -hmm. And if takes, takes. Black claims that his pawn for the exchange and super solid structure is enough. Although um, I think after some very accurate moves like bishop b5, why it should be better. Mm -hmm. So Bishop a, G6 was played immediately by Martin Brown, but this allows Bishop H6 very standard idea, stopping Black from castling. And now White aims to use his uh, development need. Knight C5, Bishop B5 check, Bishop D7 and A4, Bishop C6 and Rook A D1. And I, I like White's position very mm -hmm. much because it's very difficult for Black to do much at all here. Maybe he has to think about castling queenside. Um, but of course, you know, he comes with its risks. Maybe white will just drop the bishop back and pin. Very, very double-edged position. But uh, one where Rich has got chances, so... And people did inform us that he finally woke up from his long thought and played, what, d6. I mean, he spent, looks awful. What did he spend? On? Looks like an awful move to me. Spent over half an hour on this. Yeah, I mean, this move to me just looks very bizarre because the pawn becomes a target. Um, so, for example, immediately, if I were to go, let's say, king b1. I'm going to see if I can get the database to um, work on my computer. I don't think there's going to be any games with d6. Personally. Just oh. one game. Yeah. One lone game which white won. Yeah. Well D six just isn't a very critical move here. White black has to be quick because and he has to go B five in my opinion, because white is ready just to pounce and uh, he's more developed and yeah. and ninja yeah, mutant hedgehog is saying like, you can just play bishop d four. In his opinion, with a better version. Than yeah, maybe bishop nice. d4, but I don't even like bishop d4. I would just go king b1 here. Because mm -hmm. if you take on c3, you could always take on c3. Mm -hmm. If you take, now suddenly you have to defend this pawn with king e7. And... Oh yeah, and actually in the one game I did look up in the database, bishop d4 was played. Right. Mm -hmm. But here already... I don't know, I mean, already I would be worried about white going c4 mm -hmm. and c5. Like, I don't know what Keith's idea is here. Knight fd7, I go c5, mm. and two bishops, and this king, and it looks horrible. I mean, I would go king b1 for sure, because also the other idea is that I have knight b5 ideas suddenly. Mm. So, for example, if b5 now, maybe I can just take mm. and standard trick. So I think it's just a bad move, actually. And this is what happens uh, when uh, you're out of book, you try something, but you yeah. don't do any work on chess. And, well, I'm not saying Keith doesn't do any work on chess. I mean, on this particular opening. I mean, it's absolutely clear. And there was I mean, a comment in the chat from Paul Robson. Paul Robson, if you just joined us now, uh, yeah, I, we discussed this earlier. Also, I couldn't. Actually, when one e4 was on the board, I said Keith isn't going to play c5. Maybe he'll play the Karakan today. I couldn't believe my eyes when I saw c5 appear. Maybe it just, you know, like a finger failure. <laughs> Maybe he wanted to put the pawn to c4, but. He's slipped. played a lot of c6s in his life, <laughs> yeah. so difficult to believe. Um, Snoozefest on board one says 
Was it Jan or Radio Jan? Radio Jan. Radio mm -hmm. Jan. Radio Jan says snooze fest on board one. Well, it could heat up now that's A5 and H4 on the board. Again, a very typical idea from David is to go H5 very quickly and uh, just compromise the black king side. And black is solid, but it can go I wrong. Have to, I have to say, I'm very happy about the direction this game is taking. I think we're going to be in for very, very interesting uh, battle here. Possibly, yeah. And Justin Tan has played Rook B1. That's an interesting move because Justin um, with Rook B1 is uh, aiming to go B4 without all of this other nonsense that we saw before. But now he has to deal with Knight G4 and maybe he just wants to go Rook to F1 and say, well, you haven't actually got anything here. There is no big threat. Mm. We'll see how Mark uh, reacts. And Yvanka, what has Yvanka done here? Why didn't she go knight d7? I, I'm kind of confused. Uh, where is Yvanka? This board here. So weird, because what she's done is she's gone bishop e7, and now after bishop e5 check, she realizes because yeah. of this. I mean, that's elementary stuff as well. So she's decided, well, I'm just going to put my king on f8, but clearly this can't be the way forward. You gain nothing with black mm. doing it this way. This is that, That's poor. I think you just have to go knight d7 here. Don't understand Yvanka's um, reasoning at all with this. Um, yeah. Maybe she just, do you think she just missed it? Or just, I just don't know, I don't think she missed it. Sense. She just, I think she just feels like the king is, that black is still solid, but I mean, clearly this is. But what's she going to do? If if white castle is king side, is she maybe going to go for something with h5 or? No. So what's the work going to do? So after castles, let's say, because that looks like a, a very Is she going to go G6, King, G7? No. So what's she going to do? I don't know, but she's probably not going to do G6 because that's just a, yeah. a really nasty... I don't know what she's going to do, actually, is the honest answer. Yeah, I, I have we'll no find, idea. We will find out. We will find out one way or another, but I have no idea what she's going to do. Um... Someone's asking, when's the last time you played in the British? A long time ago. Well, not that long. Mm. When was the last time? 2000 and... Uh, when was it in Torquay? 2009, maybe? Something like that. 2009? Yeah, 2009, I think. And... Uh, and by the way, Aggie did play bishop d4. Yeah, that's uh, that's completely fine because yeah. these are the main lines. But I, I would have liked to see king b1 personally. Mm. I thought that was very strong. But bishop d4 must also be good. And yeah, we have kind of a main line, but with a very early d6, which... And knight c6. Keith is playing this so weird. I'm very confused by this, I have to say. Because now white can just take and go a3 and black's pretty much forced to take on c3 by the way tom randall is with me on uh, that yovanka will probably push the h yeah it's, but, but it's doesn't like it i don't like it either i don't i don't understand it we're we're gonna get this position probably in the eggleston mm. game and this is just like dream world for eggy i mm. mean what does i mean you're attacking here how do you defend it yeah. White's just got just the best version of this he could ever hope for. So really weird, and I, I, I am, I'm feeling Eggy today. I think Eggy's gonna. I, th win. I think all of this is just to blame on Keith's opening choice. I just don't understand it, but okay. I've talked about this enough. Maybe let's move on to um, Alex Nogel is telling us that Palace's game is very interesting. Yeah, uh, Palace did play c5, and we get something similar to what you mm -hmm. said. Queen c8, your move. 
I said F3 here, but takes, sorry, we were looking at takes, takes, and now F3. Mm -hmm. But Gormali took immediately on G4, but this for me looks, um, I don't know, it looks very close to being bad for black. Takes, rook F8, only move. And a move like knight D5. And if you take, 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 okay, pawns are equal, but I've got a D pawn and maybe it's just about okay for Gormali, but I don't like it again. I really don't. Really don't like it. In fact, we have this on the board. Takes rook E8. And... I was just wondering if, the, okay. if after knight d5 there's anything else I can do. You have to take it because queen c3 check is coming immediately. So, mm -hmm. you know, just yeah, as an example. Yep. And that's good enough. Yep. Okay, so... But maybe it's okay somehow for, for Danny. Maybe he's just calculated this and thought, actually, I'm not too bad. After knight d5, he takes, takes, he takes check king here d6 something like this blockades the pawn mm. and says well actually i'm fine yeah i'm just holding and by the way the eggleston article game get, did go down uh the line you just showed yeah and and keith played king e7 this is his grand plan but it's just it's just no good keithy on this occasion i mean even now this knight is pinned right mm. so immediately I would look at the move either f4 what would I do or g4 or what would I do here just f4 is just 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 one of the worst sicilians I've ever seen for black this is not what you want from a sicilian you're mm. you've got no attack white has got more space in the center better structure targets on d6 f6 what do you do against f4 because even now if you go e5 like it might run into f5 and this guy is weak. This guy is permanent. It's just horrible how Keith has played this. I really yeah, don't I'm understand I'm it. I'm very curious. I mean, Keith is one of the most active players of this tournament on Facebook, together with Danny Gormali, of course. And uh, Keith does talk about his games quite a lot, about his reasoning behind mm. things. So I'm curious to see what he's going to say. I mean, let's not, not write him off just yet, but... Yeah, I'm, no matter how this game goes, I'm curious to see if he's going to talk, say anything about the reasoning behind choosing C5. I don't know. I mean, it's fine to play Sicilian, but not this kind of Sicilian. And also not against a guy who... I mean, Keith knows Aggie better than I do, but all of us are teammates. And every time we talk about giving Aggie um, the white pieces because... The one thing he does know is open Sicilians mm. with both colors. Mm. And Keith, uh, all of us know, never prepares for a game. He hardly ever brings a laptop. So yeah. why would you play a theoretical line against a guy you know is extremely well prepared in them? It just doesn't... Surprise value? I, I mean, I, I don't really have uh, an answer for you, to be honest, mm. uh, Fiona. I mean, F4 just looks so logical. To and me. T. Render list, uh, well, Tom is pointing out that yeah. he could be the sole leader of the yeah. British after this round. Which if he plays be... F4, which is kind of expected. I mean, what would you do here with Black B5? But then. Um... And by the way, just to point out, because Paul Robson is saying uh, Keith got out of worse. As I said, I mean, we're not writing him off, and I don't want to be. Obviously, I love Keith um, more than anything, but yeah, I'm just just saying I can't comprehend his opening choice. But yeah, he's an extremely tough uh, defensive of course he is. player, very resourceful. So of we'll see he what he makes out of this position he, uh, he's got. And okay. I was even, you know, I was, I was just wondering if Eki could possibly, if he wins, he will be on six out of seven. If he plays, he will probably play. At a, I w was wondering if he could score a GM home with six out of nine. If he possibly. Um, possibly. Eki played another move that looked very yeah. logical to me g4 with the idea of going g5 very quickly uh but maybe this allows e5 and but then bishop c4 and bishop b5 but still it's massive position but i really liked f4 here because 
Now after e5, you have the option of going f5. You even have the option of just taking it. Because here, after uh, f takes, bishop c4. I mean, this is just dreadful stuff for black. It's just dreadful. Mm. And Keith has immediately played bishop d7, allowing f4. Yeah, he wants to get developed really quickly and put a rook on c8, but, you know, f4, rook a c8, maybe h4. And just uh, just a great, great Sicilian still. Mm. Just a great position. And Mickey on board one is still thinking. Yeah. Mickey's got a decision to make about how to complete development here because um, his pieces are a bit weirdly placed at the moment. And the, th the whole point is that black doesn't really want to go f6 too much because then after the knight gets to f5, it's a mm -hmm. lot more difficult to play g6. And also after h5, you have to always be worried about these kind of maneuvers. So I quite like how D David has played. It's posing Mickey some yep. serious over the board. And we see that Mickey has started uh, seriously thinking as well soon catching up with David and I think here when I said earlier an interesting struggle but also time wise I think uh, players are going to be short on time mm -hmm. relatively soon into the game so that's going to be interesting as well and um, I wanted to go where did I yeah I was just looking at this uh, the P Palace Gomali game also did go down the line we had yeah. on the board and uh, just looking at this made me wonder, is there a no rule, uh, no draw rule at the British Championship or can players... No, they can agree, agree a draw, draw whenever. whenever. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, let's do this, Fiona. We're just about an hour and 15 minutes into broadcast. What we normally do is take a quick break after the first hour. We can refill. Mm -hmm. And it means that uh, we will come back very shortly with some more action. The opening stage is just about... Finishing, we're getting into some very interesting middle games. As things stand, love Eggie's position. Uh, Hal versus Adam's game of the day is also very interesting. Uh, Peter Wells versus Jones has yet to really liven up yet. That could get interesting. Even Pert Huska is looking interesting, as well as various others. So don't go anywhere. We'll be right back with continued coverage of this round in a very short while. See you soon. See you soon.
Hello everybody, and boom, there you go, the titles. <laughs> Just below, if you okay. don't know who we are, Lauren Strad, Fiona, Stale Anthony, and this is round number seven of the British Chess Championships. If you've just joined us, welcome. Uh, if you have been with us all the time, um, welcome back. So that's really all we've got to say. All of our main games are still in progress today. We are only an hour and a half into the round. And we have some very big games today. Some uh, very big games. Of course, the clash of the day of the tournament, the top two seeds, David Howell against Mickey Adams. Um, in my opinion, a very, uh, very interesting game. And what did we miss? David just castle it queenside. Woo! So opposite, um, opposite, how do you call it? Opposite castled kings. Yep. I don't actually think that's how we call it, but English people understand what I'm saying. Um, and yeah, so David has just castled long, as we say. And uh, it's a very provocative move because Black has already played a5. Um, that said, he does want to continue with his plan. So they're out for blood today, these two. Mm -hmm. And the question is, but Mickey's last move is very interesting, Bishop d4, because uh, this is what I like to call a fabric softener. This is kind of just saying, okay, I'm attacking your pawn, what are you going to do? Because mm. if you go c3, then you weaken this pawn. And if you try and defend it in another way, it can be a bit awkward. You don't really want to go rook b1. And so this mm -hmm. is a cute little move, actually. So he provoked David into going to castle's queenside. And now Mickey can be happy about this. And now is he going to play knight a4? Yeah, I was just wondering. I'm curious how he's well, going to follow this up. Here, one. probably white has to go c3 to stop this and then he can even think about taking this and maybe going bishop g4 mm -hmm. something like this makes a lot of Although, sense do you not want to keep your bishop maybe put it to well not e6 because knight g5 might always be annoying not this bishop but the other one maybe the other put one. it to e6 um, um yeah maybe not immediately but well, uh, bishop g4 is quite sudden because if I can go h5 as well, I kind of lock mm -hmm. up white's attack and I'm still quite quick on my own, with my own attack. Mm -hmm. I don't need both bishops here. So, it's unclear to me. I don't quite know. And Mickey is now almost caught up on time uh, with David. Yeah. Both players um, down to, um, well, Mickey not quite yet, but down to four, uh, 50 minutes after just 12 moves. So, um, I think... Yeah, an the, hour and a half from I now. think there's going to be a time yeah. scramble in this one. But, um, wow, look at what's happened in Tan versus Hebden. Hello. Take me back to the 80s. Marky boy has gone for it. We last saw the position after Rook B1. We said that Justin wanted to go B4. And I said, well, what do you do against Knight G4? Of course, Rook F1. Queen D6 was then played by Mark. With some ideas of knight d4, it's quite a cute little idea. For example, if uh, the move b4, mm -hmm. maybe Justin's uh, Mark's idea was to go knight d4 with the idea that, well, your queen's on pre, you have to take it. And now to throw in a cute little check, perhaps. And after king h1, unfortunately, this isn't mate. But after bishop takes d6, this pawn is on pre. The knight can come to f4. So, cute little idea by Mark. So that's why Justin forced the issue with h3. But after knight takes f2, well, he has to take back. Rook takes f2. What is the idea? I'm um, just I'm very confused. Maybe he wants to... Does he want to take, take and give a check here? Like I mean, I guess you have to take. Am I not threatening to play d4? Probably. Yeah. So where Maybe do not. I go? Can I? I don't know. I was wondering if I can go to g3 now after queen c5 or if that's too much. No. Because um, I was thinking if I go back to not? f1, maybe it'll go. Rook f8. Rook f8. Yeah. So king g3, yeah. I mean, doesn't... But even after rook f8, maybe there just isn't anything. Yeah, possibly. Possibly. It looks like white should be okay. I don't know if Mark is going to do that, actually. He probably will, but... I mean, what else? Maybe he'll go rook f8 immediately. 
You want to go D4, huh? Mm. Yeah, I'm not sure it's working. Mm -hmm. Does it work? It's very complicated stuff. I don't know, but... Yeah, but no, it's working. No. I don't know if but it... If, if I can swap queens, that's good for me, sure. Yes. So, okay, so I'll go... If you go rook f8, I'll go d4 then. So I'll take... Mm-hmm, I'll take. With the c-pawn? Yep. I'll take and now I'll take your queen. Take you. And now... I mean, now, what if... Uh, hmm. Yeah, I'm not sure. Yeah, and well, Mark did yeah. take on f2 immediately, and I'm certain that his follow up is to go queen c5 check here and to put the king on g3. Um, and it looks like the king is actually quite safe here. There's no, there aren't really any pieces around. And. What's the material count now? White has got two pieces for a rook. Mm hmm. But his king can slip back, and yeah. it only takes a few moves for white to be completely winning here. So, and also, for example, after rook f8, um, you immediately have to calculate this move with black b4, queen takes c3, and a move like bishop b2, because suddenly I'm noticing that our little mm. horsey on c6 is. Okay, but can I take on d3, and then if you take on c6... Oh, <laughs> I was going to say, if you take and on you c6, take on I can take on e4. I've got this move as well. So yeah. I think uh, I think instinctively I feel like this does, shouldn't work for Mark mm. that often, but we'll see. Very quickly, in Palace of Gormali, we did get the position we were basically analysing a short while ago. This happened, Palliser gave a check, and played rook f e1. And he's basically saying, well, I've got a big pass pawn. You're not going to win it easily because your back rank is very weak. I've got an excellently placed queen. On top of that, your pawn on a5 is also on prees. So a move like rook a d8, he could be thinking about queen takes a5 because takes, uh, takes, takes, check here, check. Rook f6. Rook f6, and this might just about be okay for yeah. Richard. But for Danny. For Danny, rather. But when you're in a pin like this, it's never ideal. But that's what he's going to be calculating, if he can just go rook ad8 uh, straight away. Um, alternatively... Um, of course, there are endings like this where white can win the two rooks for the queen. And these endings can also be really tricky because um, if I get doubled on the on the D on the seventh mm -hmm. like this, there are just pawn endings that are losing. So rook f e one is a very decent move by Richard. And practically speaking, this is a lot easier for white to play than mm -hmm. black. Black has to. Black has to find a lot of yeah. really big moves here. I agree. Can I quickly go to the game between Peter Wells and Gawain Absolutely. Jones? It's an we interesting haven't looked game. at that in a while. Well, they didn't make a lot of moves for a while, but basically Peter is following your advice. Uh, trying to make the Black King. <laughs> just wants to check mate Gawain. And here, d6 he took. Knight e5. And basically saying, okay, I'm a, I'm a coming, and uh, but okay, so go and play knight d. Yeah, that makes a lot of sense because the knight can come to f six, mm -hmm. so queen h five, knight f six is is possible. But it doesn't um, look like. Peter so what is, if I take? You want to take, okay? And go queen h five, not very <laughs> soft there. And then here. And I was just wondering if that weakness would do anything. No. I mean, white just doesn't have enough firepower. Not yet. Okay, what if I go queen h6 now and try to swing the rook over? Mm -hmm. 
So let me, I'm trying to think how I can interrupt your plans immediately. Okay, let's play this. I was also wondering if you could possibly play bishop f6. Yeah, I can do that as well. That's very sensible. Put the bishop on g7 mm. and, you know, white can throw everything at this position, but I can just tell you from years of playing these kind okay. of positions that it's just Rookie not that. Three. Yeah. I mean, I'm very stubborn when it comes to positions like this, such as want to mate very badly. So queen h4. Mm -hmm. But where is the mate? On h7. You're just going to the h5. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Of course, if this was this, I'd just go g4 immediately. But mm -hmm. <laughs> Then I'll, I'll, I'm trying to work out how, how best, me. how best to mate you here. Okay, F3. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> Not working. It's looking dangerous now. Not okay. working. Yeah. No, basically, I just don't think there's anything too special here. I think a better way of doing this is something like bishop F4. And then mm -hmm. takes, takes, and let's say queen D7 here. And now playing something like queen yeah. g4 with h4. I, I'd rather be a bit more reserved if I'm going to try and attack him. Because yeah. this is quite annoying, actually. So. And I'm not giving you as much counterplay. Right. Yeah, but I think it's... What's the time situation here? Uh, Peter's got yeah. 44 minutes and Gawain's got 52. So not a, mm -hmm. a big time difference, actually. And what happened in the game between Nick Perot and Jovanka Huska? Well, not much has happened, much, basically. Yeah. After bishop e5 check, this is the last time we saw it. King f8, castles knight d7. Very strange that Nick spent so much time on this. Um, I think he's trying to find a way to punish Jovanka immediately. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, whether that exists is another question. But let's see. Um. By the way, let's have a quick look at the game we probably looked at most before the break, David Eggleston against Keith Arker, because Sean, Sean R. is saying Arker will win this. Computer has uh, wow. his slight edge, but in practice the control over the c-file is worth a pawn or two. What do you make of this? Um, I don't know is the honest answer whether I believe in that assessment because the problem is for, for for black is that white's position is so easy to play he can play f4 here he can play moves like rook h2 which is mm -hmm. really interesting as well just covering c2 and uh, his space advantage means that it's it's actually trickier for black to yeah. play um i don't know if keith will win this no i i, I don't see keith winning this what keith wants is an exchange of queens of course that's mm -hmm. what he's desperate for um, but um, yeah, I mean, rook h2 is, is the move I would play here. Um, There's a question from London Knight asking how does uh, Keith deal with g5 right away? g5 right away might be a bit well, premature, yeah. maybe because, well, for a start, I can take, take, and maybe go knight e5, or maybe even without taking. So maybe even knight e5 here. And the problem is that even if you take check here, I am now threatening your queen, mm -hmm. and you have to defend c2. Wait, what do you do after f4? Oh, no, you I can, can take, take with the queen. Yeah. But probably Sorry. I wouldn't even do this. I'd probably take on g5, take, and now play some knight move like knight e5. Mm -hmm. And this forces the exchange of queens, which is definitely what Keith wants. And by the way, Alex Nogal in the chat is saying that Mark apparently just blundered. Let's have a look at that. So after Queen C5 check, uh, Justin went king e2 and rook e d8. Now why is that a blunder? Let's see. Oh, well now this idea of b4 and bishop b2 is like... Does that win? I, t I spoke about this before. Yeah. b4, and if you take on c3, I go bishop b2. If you go queen c2, I have knight e1, and 
After queen a4. Queen a4, rook a1. Queen b5. Queen b5, and it looks like Mark is holding on here, so let's have a look. Queen takes c3. I've also got the move rook b3. Yeah, it looks like it shouldn't. Queen c2, but I just can't, because if 91, now knight d4 check is a big problem. Mm -hmm. So how is Mark <clears throat> losing here? Ah, this is also another interesting line. Here, after queen c2, maybe, maybe Justin can just take on e5. Oh, now this could be really bad for Mark. Mm -hmm. Knight takes e5, because if you take, I think I can just go bishop takes. And if you take on e4, oh, it's so close. What is going on here? Well, I wanted to take yeah. king h8, but I don't see a follow-up. So what's the idea? Knight takes e5. Um... No. But Alex is saying taking on e6, but what after yeah, knight queen, of seven? Yeah, queen knight of seven, this is what I'm trying to work. Maybe the idea is just that he's going to he's gonna mate Mark somehow. Maybe rook, so rook f1. But then queen takes b2. And there's nothing there, okay. Mm -hmm. Interesting. I can't quite see a win here. But maybe there is one. Maybe there is just a win somewhere here. Queen c1, not queen c2. What are they talking about? E4. Not quite sure, but it does look like rook e8 is very... Black and white has to do something now while the pawn is undefended on e6. So, yeah, b4, queen takes c3, bishop b2, queen c2. Knight takes e5, knight takes e5. Maybe. Okay, let's have a look at this. Maybe, English maybe what he, takes, take maybe he wants to go d4. Maybe this is the, the grand plan. Okay, if I go check. What check? I do. I the keep queen. forgetting d3 is covered. Yeah, and also the, the point is that mm -hmm. an exchange of queens here would be yep. a disaster for Mark. So maybe this is it. Maybe this is. Simply d4, the queen goes to c4 next move, or maybe you can even throw in queen takes e6 check, followed by queen c4. Yeah, and uh, rook b3, rook Tom g3. Randall is saying, yeah. yeah, just d4, but the queen can yeah. be. Yeah, and this is. This is just hopeless. Just, just, just game over. Looks hopeless to me. I mean, black can try something like rook f8. Queen c4, rook f2 check, mm -hmm. but it really is only one check yeah. and the king escapes. And I have to say, I don't know Justin uh, personally. Mm. I've seen him around a lot, seems like a very nice guy. And I saw yeah, on Facebook nice kid, he yeah. posted he just missed out on uh, making the Australian team for the Olympiad, which mm. I thought was a pity because mm -hmm. a very promising uh, young player, well on course for a GM norm, especially if he beats uh, Mark today. Massively, yeah. yeah. Well, he'll be on six out of, uh, sorry, Four, no, he'll five. be on five out of seven, having played the top three seeds yeah. and Hebden, probably only needs one out of two in yeah. his final two games for the norm, so. But okay, I mean, he's down to 27 minutes, so let's see. Yeah, he's got time. I mean, B4 is so forcing. Yeah. The other thing is, if white just does nothing here, the problem is black is just going to go rook d6 really quickly. I mean, and he will have been thinking about B4 No, I, I mean, I'm time. pretty sure he's yeah. going to play B4. I need to... <laughs> He just played it, yeah. so um, yeah, I, I I see Justin winning this, and Mark's bad tournament uh, continues. Really, I mean, he's played poorly this whole mm. tournament. He's been losing a lot of games. He he was losing even against a twenty one hundred or so player, mm. and uh, yeah, he's not. Uh, and there's a tweet from Ben Marlowe. Hello, uh, Ben. I think he's in the chat as well. Is everywhere. Uh, he's saying uh, he's enjoying the show and he's asking uh, whether it's bold whiskey or both for Howard to have castle queenside. Um, yeah, I mean, it was an interesting moment here, but castle's queen, when, when white plays h4, basically he's indicating that he, he has got plans to go castle's queenside, but it is double-edged because 
you know, even after bishop e6, king b1, like this. Black has got a lot of pieces aiming, yeah. but as Fabiano has shown, it's quite difficult still for black to actually generate some kind of valid attack here. So after f6, it's actually on David now, mm -hmm. and he's got to think, well, how is he going to continue here? Is he going to go h5? Is he going to go knight f5? Um, I'm not sure how many moves there are here. Maybe knight f5. And on a side note, Alex Nogal is asking who will play for England at the Baku Olympiad. Mm -hmm. Well, the top three seeds from this tournament, Mickey Adams, uh, David Howell, Gawain Jones, and they will be joined by Nigel Short himself and Luke McShane, I believe. Is Luke playing? Yep. Yeah. Wow. So it's we... the same team they had at the European Team Championship right. last okay. year. So we've got, we've got actually a very, very good team. And the, the best news about everything is that Nigel is actually in... A bit of form at yeah. the moment. He just scored a great performance over in Iran. Iran yeah. yeah, and with Nigel in form, it kind of changes everything because in recent Olympiads, you could argue that Nigel's performance perhaps has not been as good as you would want. Also, even with uh, uh, Gawain and David, there's been a lot of inconsistency. Mm. We need a lot more of these guys winning against lower yeah. players, drawing, and we also need an informed Mickey if we're going to have any chance at. Yeah. You know, a really good performance. So, we'll see. What do you make of the team cohesion in the English team? Um, team spirit. Well, that's the job really of the captain and to get the troops rallied. And I'm not sure who the captain is this uh, year. I'm not sure. It might just be Malcolm. Malcolm Payne. Hmm. I think it's Malcolm it Payne. It could be Malcolm. So, if it's Malcolm, you know, it's his, it's his job to keep everybody... Uh, spirits high and uh, make sure that there are no problems and remember this is something that Pete Wells did for at least mm -hmm. a, a couple of occasions and Ke Pete is a very very accomplished captain in my opinion but um, but yeah I mean we'll see it, 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 we who need is your favourite for the Olympiad? So difficult to say, but I mean, clearly I'm biased because I think that America, uh, the USA, mm -hmm. they've just got three such strong players on the top three boards that they could easily uh, run away with it. Mm -hmm. And if they have a good board for Robson or Shanklin performing, then... And Sam performed incredibly at the last Olympics. Yeah, yeah, so they've got a great shot. Of course, China, you are just fantastic. Russia are great. So it's really out of those three. Even mm. France could make a surprise. But France, I was talking about this last time, Etienne Bacro isn't playing because he's the captain or coach for Azerbaijan. So France Is he really? Yeah. Oh, I didn't know Etienne was playing. Yeah, is that official news? Is it? Well, he's not. He's coaching them. He's not playing for Azerbaijan. He's coaching Azerbaijan. He won't be playing. Wow. That's, so uh, that's France out of contention at least. Well, I mean, for, you're going to have Fresene on board two. Yeah. Board three, you'll Maze have... is playing. Maze will play. Bauer is playing. Yeah, it's and probably not strong enough. Yeah. Um, but that's a kind of controversial decision. We won't go into it yeah. while Etienne took that decision, but each to their own. Uh, Keith Arkell has played... We just saw uh, H4, Rook AC8. And yeah, just thought a last thing yeah. about the uh, Olympiad. Alex is just pointing out... Uh, yeah, we will miss Armenia, who are not yeah. playing for political reasons, of course. Very but it's going sad. to be very interesting. I think. Are it's you going? I am playing. Yeah, myself. You're playing for Luxembourg. Yes. <laughs> You're board one, obviously. I though. am. Well, uh, it's not obvious because no? we have two stronger women players, but unfortunately they're not playing. But yeah, uh, and I was saying what we were discussing earlier. I think Olympiads are always massively about all players turning up in form. If, for example, your top player is out of shape, it's going to be very difficult. Right. But also, team spirit is so incredibly important, as we saw with the Armenian team who won right. the Olympiad twice in a row with China. Both of uh, both those teams were underdogs. I mean, they were very strong, but they weren't, you know, top favorites. But right. they just had such great... You know, I always have this picture in mind after the Chinese team won it. I don't remember who, but two of the players hugging in tears. Yeah, I yeah. thought it was just so amazing. Oh, yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. It's going to be interesting. It starts a month from today. A month from today. There Not you go. Now. Yeah. Will be good fun.
And egg is just pushing these pawns up the board. Position's great for white. Mm. What can we say? Keith's position stinks. I mean, there's no play against c2. If you go knight, you can't even go knight a5. There's no knight move. I mean, the position's just really bad for Keith, and Eggie's just got absolute control here, and he can develop however he wants. He just, what he wants to do is get in g5 and rip open the king as quickly as possible, mm. but he doesn't even have to rush, really. Um, he can play bishop e2 and g5. I mean, it's just a... I don't know how big the edge is, but I would probably say it's very I, big. I mean, it's just it's just not a good position for Keith. Actually. And what? Let's go back to Justin Turn against Mark Hebden. Uh, we've had some developments. Yeah, there. Justin Indeed. played Rook C one, which is ninety five. Just seemed to be crushing. Sorry. But Rook C one, Queen takes B two. I assume the idea is Queen takes C six. This also looks very good for Justin, although now black can play d takes e4. And I'm wondering, I'm wondering whether Justin's idea is he wants to do something like this and just try and mate Mark. Mm -hmm. But I think he's not in time because of check here. Mm -hmm. Although king d1, hold on. Is he in time? Maybe he is in time. And now knight f7 is just devastating. And after rook f8, you can probably just go knight f7 anyway. So I wonder, after queen takes c6, um, also after here, maybe you don't even have to take straight away. Maybe you can just take back. Mm. And these knights do a great job of protecting each other and also protecting the king. Knights do very well around kings. And I don't know, after a move like rook takes b4 again, there's check and rook takes c7. And maybe there's just nothing here mm. for black. Maybe it's just another way of winning the position very easily. Um, and, yeah. People are saying if David wins this tournament, will he be the lowest rated player ever to win the UAK Championship? Probably not ever, because he's still got a, a reasonable rating, but he's certainly David probably. Is, yeah. I think he could possibly. No. I mean, he's in his low 2400s, isn't Yeah, he? but back in the day, there were people winning it who were less. Yeah, but you'd have to go. But I mean. He's it, not even 2400 anymore, I see. And as the tournament started, he's only 2376. Maybe he would. I think you'd have to go back a very long time. Possibly. Um, he will certainly be the biggest underdog to have yeah. won it, that's yeah. for sure. But he still has to play. There's still five games. I mean, so he let's... hasn't played Mickey and he hasn't played David, has yeah, he? Yeah, there's, there's, a, there's a few big guys he still has to play. Yeah. So And he has to win today, which is still not uh, a guarantee. And people are saying the lowest ever was Brian Ely. Brian Ely, yeah. I don't even know who that is. So, yeah. um, Ivanka has played G5, so her plan has now become clear. Was that after, I think after Bishop G3, she wanted to go H5, actually. Mm -hmm. Talking about this move, gain some... Uh, tempo here and give some love for the king but after bishop f4 she's gone g5 now i expect nick probably to go back to e3 and you know yvanka has got a space for her king but the question is um how much of a concession is g5 we'll see well, i think she maybe didn't have too much of a choice because you can't really play without that rook yeah on h8 yeah so we'll see uh keith has played rook a g8 by the way after f4 which rook c he did uh, rook sorry rook c g8 yeah the it's reason not so long ago the reason he did that was because he was worried about this h6 pawn but you know after a simple move like bishop e2 this is just a monumental disaster for yeah. keith as a sicilian black also he's now got to watch out for a maneuver like this that mm. would be just yeah. incredibly strong um, no, I, I think I think Eggy is just in full control here. I really do. Eggy is in full control. Um, and I think simplifying slightly in Pete Wells against Gawain Jones. Does ah, Pete? so Pete uh, Pete played Bishop f4. Gawain took took, and now Gawain played 
queen c6, an interesting idea. I wonder why Pete didn't play yeah, queen g4 here. here. Because after g6, okay, my pawn is on pre, but you know, I can play a move like c4. Um, I, I could even play rook ac1, although it doesn't feel I was I was right. wondering if I could go rook e3. Yeah, rook e3. The problem is after queen takes c3. And go rook e1. Yeah, I mean, it's it can be dangerous here. It can. It Maybe can. not to e1. Or do I want to right. leave my rook down? Well, the problem is then yeah. you can't swing. Yeah. So where do you put your rook? Do you put it on d1? Yeah, but so you'll have to move your queen anyway. Because I'm threatening bishop you... g6 or something. Okay. So if I went back... Yeah, it looks dangerous, rook g3, and yeah. this guy, and it, it can be dangerous. I don't know whether Keith would, but Peter's move bishop b4, I'm not sure if I like it that much. The idea is that... So where do you go, d7? Probably queen d7, I mean, why not? What's his idea? Do you think he wants to exchange the bishops, or...? I don't know. I don't know. Do you think we could possibly see a move repetition after, let's say, bishop c2, queen c6, bishop e4? Holy smokes! Oh, <laughs> no move Forget repetition. No. <laughs> he just whipped that baby off on e4. And he's claiming, you know what? Uh, I would prefer to wow. have a rook and bishop where you've got very limited attacking potential. What's going I on? I put the bishop on d5. It's a very interesting idea. Very, very interesting idea by Gawain. He feels ah, he has... No, but Tom is pointing out that after queen d7, there was possibly a bishop. Yeah, I was thinking, looking at that out the, out the corner of my eye. So here, here, queen d7. Here, here, check. Here, and just rook e3, right? Mm -hmm. so or, it, hold on, if or, this the, is or the old bishop takes g7 first. This is what he was looking at. This is the double sacrifice. The and double. if I take? Yeah, if you take, the mate? I'm going to give a check on g4 mm -hmm. to start. And if you go anywhere to the mm -hmm. h line, I'm just going to go rook e3. So if bishop h7 was working, then um, queen takes e4 was forced, basically. Um... The question is, is was it working? Yeah. Queen d7. Is there anything else? Well, there are some tricky lines like uh, queen h5, king g8, bishop takes g7, king takes g7, queen g4, maybe king h6. Something like this. I mean, some very tricky stuff like this, mm -hmm. check and king g6, and you have sacked two bishops, and I will sacrifice one back, and the game continues. Mm -hmm. So, but from afar, that's very difficult to assess. Um, and here, at least, what black has managed to do is say, okay, I have probably got enough compensation. I would say he's probably got enough compensation. Okay, so let's leave that for now. A very yeah. interesting game and go back to David Howell, who's just played g4. So things heating up here as well. Yeah, g4 by David, that's not completely unexpected. But of course, Mickey, if he wants, can, he can take this guy now. Mm -hmm. and Don't after, tell me you want to take on g4. Why not? You, I think you have to go h5, because if you go Otherwise here, you would go. Yeah, that's too solid, so h5, uh, sorry, here, h5, but maybe it's okay, because, for example, if I take, do I want to do that? I don't know if I want to do this, but, I don't know, I don't know, it's difficult, you, you have to spend some time on this. Yeah, how do you evaluate this position at first sight? Like. Probably why it's got more than enough compensation mm. because this knight is really out of play. And so now the question is... Yeah, this is probably no good. 
in, the, uh, in the position on the board. So if you don't take on e3, what do you do? Well, you can continue with your knight a4 mm -hmm. stuff because you kind of want to provoke white into c3, especially now that you've got two pawns that are on pre. And he did just take on e3, which is mm -hmm. expected. Probably, that's interesting, he's got three valid ways of taking back here. I guess pawn takes is no good. Might be fine. Takes. Do you want to close that bishop? And h5. Well, probably not. But at least the benefit of pawn takes is my queen sweeps over very quickly. But yeah, probably... Yeah, but your bishop will never... Probably, probably he'll play bishop takes here. Yeah. Or queen takes. It's unclear to me. He must have had a plan for it. He must have had a plan. Just out of the corner of my eye in the game between Palliser and Gormali, after rook fe1, Gormali played queen g5, which could be a really good move, actually, mm -hmm. because the queen protects a5 and can come back. Rook e5, queen d8, queen d4, and now queen f8. But as I say, this is... This is tricky to play for... It's very passive. It's passive, but it might just work, yeah. because he might just put all his pieces against d6 and say, how are you going to make progress? But... Is there any way I can... After... So who's to move? White to move. White to move. Can I play queen... I was going to play queen b6, but maybe then you can play rook a6, and I've achieved absolutely nothing. Mm. I mean, let's say I go here. Maybe Danny even wants to put the rook here to defend yeah. like this and just say, okay, how are you, how are you going to maximize your yeah. position here? Maybe he's just going to hold the draw. Possible. Very, very, po very, very, very possible. What else is there? I'm still intrigued by this position of Pete Wells against Gawain. Well, Pete you just played H4. Gawain had enough compensation, which Probably. he might very well have. Probably just about enough. Pete just played H4. I guess he just wants to put push think, his pawn on the way no, up to. I think he's got another idea: is that if Rook A C8, maybe he can go Queen G4 now, um, hitting the bishop and mm -hmm. the pawn. After which, Bishop G6 H5 might be slightly irritating. Mm -hmm. Could be very irritating. Yep. So that's why Gawain immediately played bishop d5 because he saw this threat. And now, if queen g4, of course, you can just go g6. Can I start with h5? You can. But I'm just going to go here anyway. I was wondering if having the pawn on h6 is that going to help me or is that. Well, if you want to go h6 yeah. now, I don't think this helps you that much. But again, I don't think Peter will be too upset about this because, I mean, well, surely you won't be upset. It's a queen up. But you know, it's when you get to yeah. these positions, it's like, ugh, actually, I've got no play. Black just goes rook c4, rook f c8. I have to defend this weakness. Black has got no weaknesses, so not so easy. Mm -hmm. I still think. I think Pete's going to be very happy here. What about Mark Hebden? Is he happy? He's just taken on I B4. I doubt he is very happy. He's just taken on B4. And so check is the first move you check you check out. Queen G6. Now here, can I just take on C7? What's the big deal? What, okay, I can even take on E5. Mm. What if I take here? What's the idea? Yeah, it's just I'm struggling. Well, to... yeah, it just looks like these knights do a great job of yeah. protecting the white king. And it looks as though black is in big trouble. So Mark looking at a really desperate position. By the way, Keith has played a move after Bishop So He played e5. e5. So now uncovering an attack. I mean, for me, 
I mean, Eggy is thinking about this, but after Knight takes, you'll realise that this just helps Black. I mean, I think you have to go F5. Five, yeah. I think so. Because G5 is still always in the air. You shut this bishop out. The bishop can't come here. Also, you secure D5. I mean, I don't know anything about these kind of positions, but just looks absolutely awful. Well, now this rook H3, rook HD3 yeah. is still in the air. You close the rooks out. Looks just... Just and someone in the chat is saying how he's going to lose on time. I very much doubt that. I've been uh, spending a lot of time with David over the last couple of years. We are teammates uh, at Shadleton and we've been at a lot of tournaments together. And I've seen him be in horrible time trouble, especially in the forensial. They changed the time control this season or last season, but before that uh, it was without increment. So he was in even more horrible time travel, but I've never seen him lose uh, on time. So I doubt today is going to be the yeah, first time. Eggy did something very strange. He went rook hg1. Let's have a look. Was that, it's either a good move or a really bad move. I mean, it still might be fine. I mean, the point is Eggy didn't, Eggy didn't want to clarify the situation with f5. He didn't want to lose a bit of dynamism but the truth is this maneuver looked so strong that i would have found it very difficult not to play this he played rook hg1 and keith immediately replied with bishop e6 so now bishop takes b3 is it and i think it's interesting that keith started playing very quickly because he probably realizes that playing quickly and somehow you know trying to put some psychological sort of pressure on david saying I've got this under control now. I'm playing quickly. Uh, so, you know, if Keith was spending more and more time here, it would be difficult. But, um, but well, he's down on time. I yeah, don't know. That, but he was extremely down on I, time. I don't know if I like uh, David's last decision to go rook yeah. hg1. Why not play the logical move, f5? Shut the black pieces down. Mm. Because now, after bishop e6, this is a real threat. Mm. So you go king b1. And maybe Keith wants to just install a knight. Yeah. The thing is, this is on, this is on sometimes. Can I remove the knight? Is there anywhere I can go? Um, well. No, no, I mean earlier, after bishop e6. Can't really. You can go to a1. <laughs> if you like. Um, or can I at least defend my knight with... I don't know, queen e3. I don't really want to no, take with the c-pawn. I mean, give for up. a start, yeah. you have to worry about this. But yeah, my point is I, I don't want to take on b3 with the c-pawn and give you the d4. Yeah, but screen. I don't think you can stop it now. This is why I don't like Eggy's last move, actually. Yeah, Very I don't like it either, but now what's he going? I don't like it. I don't like it. Um... By the way, ladies and gentlemen, I should point out that at 9 o'clock European time, that's 8 p.m. English time, our very own Jan Gustafsson is going to be doing a banter bullet session. He's going to be playing one minute chess whilst commentating on the moves, which is something to watch out for. And it's also 20 minutes from now, there's Nicolas uh, Premium Coaching Show. Yes. They'll be concu concurrency. Con Concurrencing us, is that a word? Commencing? No, concu, like they're going to concurrence, be concurrence for us. Take away our viewers. Oh. Is that not a word? I don't know in that context. Maybe I'm just, I'm just my vocabulary is not very good. Let me have a look. It's Let's a French a word, but. Okay. I mean, concurrence does it. Yeah, compete, right. Yeah, but uh, no, that's, it's not that's quite the same meaning. Right. Yeah, because in France, like, concurrent. Anyway. Anyway. You get my point. I gotcha. And by the way, it's getting rather warm in here. Yeah. Did you think the same thing? But I had uh, one of my dear Twitter followers warming, warning me today about you and uh, Jan turning the AC You don't want the AC? High. No, we can have it on for a while. Because it is yeah, now roasting and yeah. I feel like I'm... Might just fall asleep. One second. Yeah, it's on. Dover Beach, people are trying to help me out, concurrent. But I was looking for a verb. 
but people get what I mean. Jan and Con- Nicholas. Yeah, some, something that is concurrent yeah. is happening at the same time. So. But in French, there is a verb to say. So f- yeah, it would just be they the They are passage. competing with us, yeah. Either way. Hold on. Question from Tonzo. Excellent question, Tonzo. Why is Chess24 more expensive for its memberships than, in, for instance, ICC or Chess.com or Chessbase? Besides here are Jan and Lawrence. It's because there's just tons more content. For example, on the ICC, great website for playing. I can happily say that I still play on the ICC. I know the ICC team very well. They just don't have the uh, not only the amount of material, but the quality of material. If you look at what Chess24 has in its training videos, thousands of videos, Svidler, Dvoretsky, Gustafsson, and very recent uh, videos as well. They're really up to date. So you've got that, and of course, um, that is already, I've been saying this with the end, to pay 10 euros a month for so much material is just unbelievable value. So that's the reason why it's the quality and the quantity of the value, Tonzo. And the fact that you get to watch transmissions like this for free. I don't know how much longer that's going to happen. So why not become a premium member and find out? You can watch thousands of hours of chess videos in numerous languages, moreover. And I'm just looking at uh, the game, not the most exciting, well, the game between Richard Palliser and Danny Gormali and Danny seems well, to now have gotten his yeah. position where he's just asking White, what are you going to do? Yeah, so it's really a case of what is White going to do? How is he going to... But at the same time, Black is short of a lot of moves here. What if I go Queen... Uh, well, it's Black to move. Mm-hmm. Where do you want to go? Queen G7? No, I wanted to go Queen D6, but then I realized it was my move. But yeah, I'm not sure what Danny is going to do. Queen no, 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 Queen G7, no. I think swapping queens is probably good for black. Must be good for um, black. Swapping queens probably is okay for black. But even swapping queens sometimes doesn't completely relieve pressure. For example, I'm just gonna I'm just gonna put something. Well the good news is that black yeah. can now come this way. I don't so, think white will have to take. No, I don't think he will take. I think white will play queen, queen B6, B6, yeah. yeah. And the uh, the pressure remains. Now I'm threatening this. Can I go now, Queen F6? Mm-hmm. You certainly can. Hmm. Um. I mean, it's tricky because even here I can play this move. And if you take, can you take on the eight? Yeah, I'm thinking about. Uh, yeah, I have to. Mm-hmm. Analyze all of these, or whatever way you want to take mm-hmm. it. You know, I have to make sure that with black that I'm not going to lose yeah. this. But two rooks and the p- possibility of getting a pass pawn on the queen side. And great damn dread spot is saying he loves this Palace so Gomali game should be extremely educational. Yeah, and I think I can learn a thing or two there as well. Yeah. And oh, that position is actually on the board. <laughs> Just oh, queen f six is on the board. Yeah. Yeah. So the question now is: Is Danny going to? Uh, is Richard going to take on a5? Maybe he'll go b3 first, just to keep this pawn. Danny will then follow up with king g7, and then a move like queen takes a5 is once again very possible. And we could very well get this kind of position, and you know what? I'd be very scared here with black, yeah, because yeah. two rooks work really well, and there's yeah. always drawing chances. So, In fact, Richard has just played b3 very, very understandably so um in the Hal adams game we have basically got what we were looking at fiona bishop takes e3 queen takes e3 did happen mickey took on g4 mm-hmm. and now rook to g1 by david so what, what? david down to ah, 20 minutes and now the idea is that h5 is not such a big deal because i can now move this knight oh, wait. and play f3 so i don't know if he'd go to h2 probably and then if bishop e6, well, I mean, queen h6 is already very dangerous. Mm. So he, so Mickey's not going to go h5 here. So what is Mickey Adams going to do after rook here? Okay, so what if I retreat the bishop? Where do you want to go? To h5, no? Mm. You want to put the bishop here, or where do no, you want to go? No, I guess I can't go, because you go queen h... 
Queen h6, bishop g6. Bishop g6. Okay. Uh -huh. So where do you want to put the bishop? That is the question of the moment. What if I go to e6? I mean, immediately, I mean, I'd you know I'm looking at this move, yeah. right? Must I mean, be premature. Why? Even oh. this. Wow. Even this might not be premature. Wow, wow. Rook to hg7 is definitely in the air. I think I'd play rook to hg7 here. <laughs> Just, just for the fans. <laughs> I don't. No, you can. The problem is, you can, of course. I can. What if I go bishop g8? Yeah, you can do that. Which is very sad. And if I go rook g1. Oh, someone's pointing out a crazy move in the chat. Uh, imagine knight of the saying, "Don't move the bishop at all. Play knight c4." What? Again, as we pointed out oh. earlier, we're not using engines here. Oh, knight c4. Beautiful. So now I'm forced to take, take, take. But even this, I would be kind of concerned because I drop f6. What? Well, and probably the cold computer just wants to drop back and say, got everything under control. Nothing to, nothing to see here. Possibly it's difficult to play over the board, but yeah, Mickey's, but Mickey's very capable of playing this move. Because I because am looking at the evaluation bar here, chess 24, and it does say zero, zero, zero. But yeah, I think we're still in for... Yeah, probably after rook here, bishop e6, probably I can't take, prob probably. <laughs> I would like to very much, but I probably can't. And look at this, Justin Tan. Oh, basically happened what I thought. He took on c7, he played queen f7. A check was given, and maybe Mark's going to swing over to h6. Oh, actually, somehow, somehow he's still kicking and yeah, flying. Yeah, but Justin has everything covered. B1 is covered, h4 is covered. So yeah. Well, e3 isn't covered. E3 isn't covered. So after queen h6, um, which looks like the logical move to me. To threaten queen e3 check. What's Justin's idea? Not easy. I think probably here, maybe he should have taken on e5. Because this covers a5 and you threaten rook takes e7. Mm -hmm. And if rook e8, maybe you can just take another pawn. I mean, this is always covered mm -hmm. and there are no checks. Maybe yeah. this was the way to go. Because now after queen h6, I mean, maybe, you, yeah, you're going to have to stop this check. King e2, check. Maybe you have to go here now. I still like white's position because I think I'm just... But now if I go to h6, I'm threatening taking on d2 as well. Uh -huh. So what do you do? No, move the knight here or something. Just not be scared. I can also put the king on g3. Everything's kind of... Mm -hmm. And if here I might just be really cheeky, can I do this? <laughs> I can't, there's a check. It's a shame. Mm. But it's this kind of thing. But definitely Justin yeah. lost a bit of uh, coordination there. And in the Adams game, Mickey didn't play this. He, he didn't see this was a nice shot. He took, took and played king h8 and thinks that He's uh, holding here. So the first move to look at is h5. Because that's what you do in these positions. Because mm -hmm. you want to go h6. And I don't think there's a way to stop that. So I think Mickey would have to go knight d7. And if h6. What do you do? G g6. And it's not so easy to break through mm -hmm. this. David will probably go queen g3 and f4. 
try and open up some lines. I mean, definitely enough compensation, but I'm not sure if it's... And I see David Eggleston is still thinking after bishop e6, and I think he's kicking himself. Yeah, I think he's just realizing, why didn't I play yeah. f5? Why did I allow all of and this? And just yeah. not just crush mark like so. In crush so Keith. Crush, sorry, Keith. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Don't, don't, didn't like that. strange. One. Yeah. Um... Let's quickly check in with Chris Ward against Peter Batchelor, and I like Chris's position. I like White's position here. Might be okay for Peter, but you know, King might be a bit weak. Lots of work to do. Mm -hmm. Thomas Fodord is, oof, he's an exchange up, but I would be very worried if I was yeah. White here. So I think just optically, it looks as though Osborne has got lots of kind of play. Yeah, lots. And in Mark Hebden's game, um, someone in the chat was saying that Mark would probably go a5 now and that there was still an awful lot of tricks to yeah, deal a with. Yeah, a5 forward. is like a very yeah. sensible move because this pawn can be a real nuisance. And, and just in a... Okay, still has to play 10 moves, 10 minutes for 10 moves. Not terrible time trouble, mm -hmm. but still in a position like this where you fell earlier, you must have been winning. But now you've given your opponent some chances. Yeah, definitely. Definitely very tricky here. Yeah. With the both rooks as well. Active. And in the Gormelli game, we are going to have this uh, rooks against queen ending. Yeah, and the problem is, um, I'm not sure how how good this is, The good if whether Gormelli has got drawing chances. Uh, they're saying I'm doing more analysis today than I did with Jan yesterday. <laughs> <laughs> different kind Someone of show. Someone has to do that. Analysis, Somebody's got right? to do the analysis. It's, it's it's a different kind of show today, <laughs> ladies and gentlemen. Um, I'm gonna say Palace. Uh, I wonder. Yeah. The thing is now with Black, what you have to do is you have to do something like this to stop the advance of the pawns, and then you have to activate your king's pawns, create some weaknesses. Still not easy because they're the always checked. The question is, checked. how can White manage to double on the seventh rank? Can Maybe he? he can't. Yeah. Well, it all depends on this position. Because if you allow White to go rook d7, that's probably bad. So I think you have to attack this pawn from mm -hmm. behind to make the rooks passive. And he played queen c3. Now that's probably the same thing. That's probably the same thing. The more I look at this, I think it's a draw. It's definitely not a draw. <laughs> I mean, it's if it, it's not a draw because, like, for example, here already I have a concrete threat in a concrete jungle. Mm. So... Yeah, but if I can... What do you want to do? What do you want to do? just want to stop you from going to d7. You can't. Seven. You can come back here, but you're going passive. Oak to g4. I'm not sure what I'm doing there. Yeah, that's that's not a good square for the for the lady. Even this move is interesting. I might go here, I might mm -hmm. come here. Yeah, I, I, well, I think Richard is really playing for two results because mm -hmm. you're never winning this with black. The two rooks are just too powerful. Um, in the world's Gawain Jones game, we've got this position, and we last saw it after this, this, and queen d3. So PK is defending his pawn, and you know he's saying, "Okay, I'm going to go queen g3 anyway." Peter wants to keep the the king side attacking chances alive because um, he still can achieve an attack if he just keeps everything uh, if he can keep everything in check on the queen side he might he might still be a lot better here 
Well, maybe, yeah, you were just going to switch games to... Yvanka's position looked disgusting. Absolutely. Imagine Nidoff's just saying, strange to say, but actually, Fusca may be the deadest of all this yeah, round's this, victims Yeah, this position right is just so bad. I mean, Nyx just played a great move after yeah. Bishop E2, King G7. He's reorganized to go C4 and break the position open. Now after takes, takes. Look at the difference in the safety of the kings. Look at the difference in the activity of the pieces. And what are you going to do with black here? I mean, this is just gross. There are just weaknesses. I mean, I don't know the objective for evaluation, but it wouldn't surprise me if it was losing for black this mm. position. There's d5 always you have to deal with. And this is just typical Nick. Nick, uh, what he loves. What is going on? Has Eggy played a move or is he still... Eggy played king b1 yeah. after mm -hmm. much thought. And after takes, takes knight d4, he needs a move. Um, I just don't understand. His position was so beautiful a couple of moves ago, and he could have prevented all of this with may a simple Maybe it's fight. still just miles better somehow. But can I go queen b? <laughs> I would love to sacrifice the rook for the. I mean, for example, if I take here, what are you going to do? That's the first question. take with the f pawn. Yeah, and now my idea was to go here. Knight mm -hmm. f3 doesn't work. No, it might, well, I'm trying to calculate it. Queen so d4. Oh, queen d4. Queen d4. Well, let's say queen f2 takes, mm -hmm. and does this work? Check. Check. Might work. Mm -hmm. Then again, might not. King c8. Ah, oh, but now I can take. Uh huh. Then it works. Because I've yep. got rook c1. Yep. <whistles> that works. So this is what Eggy was thinking about for so long. So if takes, takes, knight d4, he's just got this. And the point is, if d takes, he's got this annoying check. And if queen d6, I've got check on b7. So you'd have to go something like king king d8 but even here again you could seriously consider takes yeah because you can never go here because of rook c1 and if you block i've got this and yeah this is this is what eggy eggy wants to do he's going to take on e5 mm -hmm. i'm sure of it yeah sure as sure can be David Howe has played the move I expected, queen to g3. His idea now is he wants to go f4 and h5, and, you know, he just wants to attack. And uh, someone is asking, uh, why did Jones sacrifice his queen? Yeah. And that was because of this tricky line, probably, with bishop yeah, it was here. So it's I'll difficult to calculate. Yeah, in this position here, white's got a fantastic resource, bishop takes h7 check. Very well known motif. It's a double bishop sacrifice. After king takes h7, queen h5, king g8, the idea is then to go uh, give up another bishop to just completely blow the king's side mm. position open. Now, a lot of people say, well, why can't here um, black play a move like f6? Well, the problem is, um, apart from the fact that white can always take here, I'm just trying to calculate. He, you also have to deal with this kind of stuff. And um, but it's it's kind of messy, so I'm trying to work out. I always after f6, I really. I mean, it's just I think it's scary, and if Gawain thought that he has some decent compensation after three queen takes e4, it's the sort of thing sometimes just difficult to calculate it. All probably. You can maybe maybe this is just winning. Yeah. Maybe just bishop h6 is winning. Because rook f7, queen g6 check, and queen e8, queen g4 check, and mate. Yeah, so bishop h6 is is just very strong here with no real defense to some check on the g line. So that's why here Gawain thought he would take, get a rook and a bishop, which is a very standard kind of sacrifice. And we've got this position, 
And yeah, and you know he's going to get play against this pawn, and probably he's instinctively again. I feel like he's probably got enough. Yeah. Because this bishop is so strong on d5. And I'm looking at one of uh, the games of the day, a very interesting game between Justin Tan and Mark Hebden. And Mark did go a5. And Justin played rook a7. And someone was saying in the chat, Kevin Winter was saying maybe rook b2, which does look Yeah, it looks completely natural, yeah. doesn't it? To threaten rook takes d2. You probably have to stop that with rook d7. Yep. And maybe black would sidestep. Just takes queen f8 is a problem. So rook d7. There's also a check we have to deal with. Uh, but someone... Well, uh, let's go back a second. Mm -hmm. Imagine knight Ops was saying after rook b2, queen, queen d5. d5. Now that's... That's strong. That is really strong. <laughs> because, of course, takes, there's all the back rank stuff. And there is no check. There's no check anywhere. And... But you can go queen f6. But somehow I might be able to take this. And what if after queen f6 can I... I can't take on e5. You can go here, actually. <laughs> um. Curious. Curious position here. Rook a8, actually, could be annoying. Well, black can always come back. The takes, takes, and now no, okay. here. But I can also take on e5. Probably. Yeah, but I don't want to take on e5 because, but you know... Can I, I take with the knight first? Uh, yes. Unless you're running into some checks, but no. That looks possible as well. Yeah, there are just a million ideas here. So that's why Rook Mark played Rook A8. Mm. What if you go Queen D5 here? Yeah, probably have to move the Rook again. Did I miss that? Queen D5? Okay, then I have to go Rook B8. I Woo! Guess, so rook C8. Which one? This one, then? Yeah. But... Now I can take. Mm -hmm. Hasn't that just been a massive victory for Justin? Yeah. Queen d5. I'd play it. Just because it would upset. Yeah, queen d5. d5 yeah. He's done it. Great move. Illustrating back rank themes. Mm. Uh, back rank ideas. Beautiful move. Illustrative moves shows that nothing can be taken in yeah. view of. And now, after here, queen takes a5. Yeah, I think Mark just probably missed queen yeah, a5. Yeah, he probably missed it. Yeah. And now, Justin is back in the driving seat, because here there is still no rook b2, because this guy's hanging on d8. Wow. Amazing. Amazing, yeah, amazing, amazing. Winning amazing. the a-pawn is a massive victory for Justin. Especially um, with... Being relatively short on time, it's one big pain less you have, to, well, you don't have to deal with anymore. So, B so Keith? Keith took, took, and played B5. And if I go rook C1 now, that's the first move I would look at, looking that's at what this pin. Ninja reckons Queen as well. Queen B yeah. somewhere? Queen D7, Queen B7. I mean, this just looks, let's say Queen B6. And what's the move? If there is a move, not so clear that there is a move here. B5, okay, let's think. Um, ah, now knight d4 is a threat, so. Rook c1 looks so natural. Yes, but is it the right move? Rook c1, queen b6, and now what's the idea? Doesn't feel... Maybe rook g3 with the idea of coming in. But mm. I felt like he had a lot more mm. earlier, David. Um, 
yeah, this is this is a beautiful position, queen d5, really pretty. Really very, very pretty. And yeah, Mark's in big trouble. I think it's interesting Justin played it so quickly, which means he probably had seen this idea before. Um, you know, he, I've, I yeah. reckon he might have seen rook b2, queen d5. Yeah, very possibly. Yeah. Very possibly. Um, Adam Hunt is in the chat. Hello, Mr. Hunt. The very famous, famously, the brother of Harriet Hunt. <laughs> no, that's not your claim to fame, mate. I oh, know. I'm sorry. And by the way, on the top board, uh, Mickey Adams. Yeah. With now we're getting rookie seven. Rookie seven f four. Let's go. Now it's time to. Also with f four, Black has to worry about the fact that White might go f five. Mm -hmm. Like just, just to put, let's say, I don't know, a move, queen d seven. F5 is interesting as well, to so then go h5, h6, mm -hmm. and you do open lines by force. So is Mickey going to take and, say, play knight d Ah, but now knight d7 runs into bishop takes c7. So rook e7, I'm not sure about what he's doing against f4. Takes. Yeah, takes. Oh, wait, hold on. No, knight c4, minimum I've got is bishop c1, right? Ah, maybe this is his idea. This is his idea, isn't it? He wants to go knight c4 here. And what's that point if I just retreat? Now I'm going to take, mm -hmm. and I get the square for my knight on e5. Okay, and after knight c4, do I have a choice? Knight c4. Uh, mm -hmm. Maybe bishop c3? Takes, takes, 95, h5, with the idea of h6, probably forcing h6. And it's one of those positions where could be just about okay for black, but maybe not. d4 and e5. Oof. I'd be very scared playing this with black, mm -hmm. that's for sure. Very scared. Mm. I don't know what the objective assessment is, but... And what has Eggy done? Eggy... No, we have this position, rook oh, two, one, queen yeah. six. Now, now Eggy really has to find rook yeah. g3. Otherwise, Keith could start to take control of this position. I think Keith is now going to be a lot happier than he was half an hour or an hour ago. Yeah, and Mickey does knight c4. Knight c4 yeah. yeah. So, probably David's going to just retreat here, because here, I mean, even in this position, for you, know, you can take, you can play this, mm -hmm. and you're not really ever a pawn down here if you get a pawn to h6, and if black plays h6, well, you've always got squares for the, the rook. Yeah, moves like queen h3. It's difficult to give up this bishop though, so I probably wouldn't do it. I'd probably play this move and just go h5. Mm -hmm. And, even this and then say it's your move. Down. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. And look at this. What have we got here in the Gawain Jones game? Queen g3, rook ac8, bishop h6 by Peter Wells, bishop f8. He took. What happened? Ah, rook takes c3. An f3. And the idea is that after takes h6, h6 rook, I don't know which rook, probably this one, mm -hmm. takes, takes, and queen f4. Pete probably still thinks he's okay, but I've got a feeling Gawain will draw this. Gawain now has a, a pawn as well. He has a pawn and a rook yeah, and a bishop now. Something like f5, and maybe he'll just go a4. But look how active mm -hmm. black is. No, it's... Don't know. Don't so know. is there anything better? F Eggy played rook g3, which yeah. is important. Rook g3, knight d4 on the board, and now rook g c3 will be played by Eggy. Um... Rook d8 probably will be played by Keith, but these are the positions, as I say, Keith is. 
Keith is much more at home now. Keith is much happier. He's got a, a worse position, but how much worse is not clear. Maybe B4 here, mm. fixing some squares. And the question is, how do you break through a Zeggy? Maybe you just shuffle around a bit, put the bishop on D1. Maybe F5, G5 is now a, mm. a threat. Yeah. Still, even though black has got this great knight, his rooks are completely out of the game. Uh, very, very interesting round, actually. Uh, Gawain played rook three to c7. Seven. It's pretty much the same thing. And actually... I mean, I don't have to take... You don't have to away, take immediately. But is there anything smarter I can do? This is what uh, Peter is analysing. I'm not sure I can do anything really now, so... Um, it's a shame my king isn't on h2. Could I then play rook c1? I mean, even that wouldn't do it. Oh, would it? Anyway, just yeah. fantasizing. <laughs> well, no, you have to look at things to improve here. So, what if I go king h2? Yeah. Then I'm threatening rook c1, I guess. Mm hmm. Yeah, rook c1 is a massive threat, so probably I have King. to... Probably not to f8. I'll probably have to go to the corner, reluctantly. Takes, takes. Queen f4. And now maybe I have to go... Maybe if I ever go f5, maybe I can go f5 then. Maybe I can do this. And if you go queen e5, I can just come back. I probably want to swap a pair of rooks, so I'll probably go rook c1. Yeah, after F5, F5. one that that looks very decent. And if I go here, uh, then you go then you're going in and actually yeah. I'm losing. So I think these endings are probably drawn, although I might prefer black yeah, still. Yeah. Because I've got these two pawns and mm -hmm. But I I think white's But now I can go Queen A three. And then I have a draw at least. Probably you do. Yeah, that's a mm. that's a draw. At least. Probably don't have more than a draw. Probably not. I, I, he played king h2, so he, he, I like this move, uh, Fiona. I think that's a very, very decent move. Let's quickly go back to the Justin Tan Mark Hebden game, because rook c2 is on the board. So what actually happened? Queen d5, rook a c8. And he, he took, took the on e5 one. first. Queen g6. Maybe he just felt that actually here um, there are all kinds of threats of knight g5, knight f7. So queen g6, just touching this pawn on g2. g4. Why can't I go king f2? Because of rook c2. Okay, g4, rook e8. Now he takes another pawn and rook c2. And suddenly uh, there is a bit of a threat here. So what's the idea? Does he want to go queen f5? No, that can't be the move. Queen f5, queen b6. What's What does he want to do? Feels winning. So, so he's down to four minutes. I mean, he only has queen. to play five moves, but still it's Probably never... queen f5, because this is um, a disaster with uh, f five different uh, attacking mm -hmm. options. So queen f5, probably Mark would keep the queens on and go to c6, let's say. But we just need to find a little bit of refuge for this. I would probably play rook f7 here. By the way, we also do need to keep... Oh no, my pawn is hanging. We do need to keep an eye on the top board because... Uh, Davy Boy. Genic, Davy Boy is getting very, very short on he time He loves now. getting short on time. It's his favorite hobby. This should not really come as a shock to anybody. I love how he said, Fiona, how less than six minutes now? I mean, I, I did say, as I said earlier, I said at the start of this show, I think David needs to keep an eye on his time earlier because he's very good when he's short on time, but it's going to be a lot more difficult to play against Mickey Adams when he's short on time. Yeah. So I'm not um, saying David having four minutes is great by any means. The only good news about David's position is that it's quite easy to play. Like, he could just play this... This this move comes automatically, and then this move comes automatically. Mm. So there are three moves, and the rest of it is quite, in some ways, quite automatic. Yeah, but still, he'll have to play 20 moves with almost no time, which is never... 
Never nice. C'est la vie, as they say in some parts of Luxembourg. Well, what's happened in our third game? Is that it? Oh, no. No, Nick just has just decided to just go and... Uh, do you mind if I switch off the air conditioning? No, you, you do. I if do. you're cold. Yeah. I'm very... Freeless. We might have to switch it on later. Yeah, Um... Yeah, Nick has gone F4, and basically, this looks like a disaster for Yavanka because mm -hmm. Nick's just decided to open lines against the king, and it wouldn't surprise me if, yeah, it wouldn't surprise me. And how if is it's more or less winning? Our friend Danny Gormali doing? Daniel Gormali, well, he's still shuffling around with his queen. He got in h5 and mm -hmm. he provoked g3, which is good for him because he wants to play h4 and open up the king uh, as soon as possible. But, yeah, it's, it is difficult to win this with white, but white is never at risk. So, we'll see. Eggy played bishop d1, so that's a, probably a decent move unless... Unless Keith is really thinking about b4. With the idea that check here, takes, takes. Even if white wins a pawn, you know, Irish pawn center. Yeah. And rook b8. Yeah, maybe this was a mistake. Bishop d1 by Iggy. Difficult. Yeah, I, I mean, it wouldn't surprise me if b4 was the right move here. Um, and the computer still likes white. Computer loves white. Computers love bishops. Yeah. Um, Gawain played rook d7. So... Mm -hmm. He's basically saying, okay, I don't think you can improve here with white. But can, so can we get this line we looked at earlier? Take on g7. Yeah. Then queen but then, f4. But now there's no check, so I can go rook c2 maybe. Mm. Maybe, but there is a check here. Nisokla. Very tricky, very difficult to say. Very, very difficult to say and not entirely sure. Could possibly get this line we were looking at earlier with f5, rook c1, and this perpetual. Possibly, but Gawain's kind of trying to get a better version. <laughs> Danger Ma was saying, home from work, and the first thing I see is Fiona has the second-rate chair. Did you guys talk about this? No, but no? I've had that chair for many days. How does he know? How can I... he... Ah, because I got up, then he saw... Mm hmm Anyway, and how... Well, let's go back Osborne to Osborne is winning versus Fodor. Hold on, that's a big result. Well, we were saying the position... Look at these bishops. Yeah. Oh, my God. And now this horsey is ready to go and give a discovered check. Where can I go? Where do we go? Um, mm -hmm. Everything just, just looks here, so no? terrible. Yeah. Check. Here... It's not completely over. But doesn't look good no. for... And he did go knight h3. Ah, uh, knight h3, h3 king, king g2. g2. And what's his idea? Maybe he wants to go check. And if takes here. Mm -hmm. So do we have another move we have to check? Or? But even that, is that... Oh yeah, that's completely winning. Uh, check here. The problem is I'm just going bishop c6 wherever yeah. you go. <laughs> Looks like just Mr. Osborne yeah. is going to pull off a great victory here. So congratulations to him. And David is now under a minute apparently. So Whoa. let's go there. David how he loves time trouble. He just loves time trouble. So that's a position you, is it, what, so what happened? Bishop c1, 
And you said now age five. Yeah, sort of age automatic. five is like, if you've got no time left, just play age five. It can't hurt your position. I mean, David's going to have to play 20 moves with no time whatsoever. Yep. Welcome to the world of David Howe. Don't understand why. And he took. He took. Yeah, I mean, that's another, mm -hmm. that's a kind of very interesting decision. I mean, Mickey will take back. And now, as I said to you before, the important thing is that Mickey wasn't able to... He, he has got this weakness now. And David yeah. sensibly plays rook f1 with the idea of rook f5. Um, and maybe this was a very good decision by David mm. Howe. Because after rook f5, you have to defend this guy. The right rooks can double. And this really doesn't feel like you're a pawn down at all. Mm. So maybe this was a very, very good decision by... Monsieur How. In Eggleston versus Arkle, I'm kind of surprised Keith didn't play b4. He played a5, and now I'm wondering whether you can go b4 with white. Let's just have a look at something like this. If I manage to recapture with the queen mm -hmm. here, does this kind of thing help me? Or am I really going to be concerned? Maybe you can just take and say, okay. Yeah, I was looking at this. It's hard oh, to believe. Yeah, maybe because rook c4. Attacking up at knight e6, simply. And this is a position that Keith would mm -hmm. relish. Um, but can I now play yeah. in this position you were just showing? How did you get there? b4. So b4. Rook c7. Takes, takes, and takes. Yeah, and then you took on f4. Mm -hmm. Uh, yeah, rook c. I'm not even sure. Do we even have to do that? I was looking at bishop a4. Or maybe start with rook c4. Knight back and then bishop a4. And then just rook. There is nothing. I'm losing a piece. <laughs> yeah, you've actually self pinned yep. yourself. Uh, yeah, no, Eggy's, Eggy's gone for it with g5. This is his idea. This is the egg step. This is the Eggy we know. Yeah, actually. Eggy's done right. He has to do this. Forget mm. playing on the queen side. Let's open up this king while I still have rook c7s and so on and so forth in the position. This is this is what you have to do. This is strong. This is strong. This is the Eggy we've been seeing all tournament. Yeah. Eggy is strong. And also now bishop g4 is in the air. This is very important. So when rook c7 check comes, I've got rook d7 takes, takes bishop g4 check, which can be a very important check. Mm -hmm. Very, very important. And I know that the Eggy fans are going, Eggy, Eggy. <laughs> Everybody wants Eggy to win the British Championships. Even I want Eggy to win the British Championships. Eggy is having a very busy summer. He's playing pretty much non-stop. I saw this on Facebook. Let me just look this up. What? He's already... What's happened? What's this? With the rook is hanging on C... Rook d7, that can't work. Why not? It just can't. <laughs> Maybe it does work. Holy smokes. Does that work? Wow. What a move. What a move. Justin Tan. Well, these back rank themes. I mean, yeah. if, this, if you're ever going to show your students what back rank made is and, and the kind of themes there are. But someone's saying Tan just blundered, so maybe you're right. But it looks like it holds up. Now I don't see a refutation. Heck and sex saying Tan just blundered. Because if check, king f2. Yeah, there's just mate. But can I take on d2? No, d2. Take on d2. Yeah, I can take yeah, with, yeah, yeah. with any piece. Yeah, okay, let's go back. Wow, rook d7, just in Tan, just in time. Um, and I'm saying it's a good move, so... Who says it's a good move? Adam. Adam Hunt. Yeah, because now after queen takes d7, queen takes c2, really it's a lot easier to defend the king. You can walk your king over to g2 or even to g3. The knights yeah. do a great job. Put your queen on e4 and, and try and win with this e pawn. So maintaining winning chances. Great move, Justin Turn. 
By the way, I was just saying for all the Eggy fans out there. Mm -hmm. So Eggy has played already in the Paris Open uh, just before the British. So he's now playing the British right after the British. He's off to play in the first Saturday round robin, GM round robin in Budapest. And then he's playing Abu Dhabi in the end of August. So he's had a very busy uh, summer. Wow. He's obviously trying to become a GM. And um, I wouldn't be surprised well to see him. He has one norm, doesn't he? Or does he have zero? Probably has one, at least one. Maybe he even has two, I'm not I sure. I think he has one, if I'm not mistaken. But I think it's very likely he's going to score a second one here. Rook d7, though, by Justin Tan is a holy, yeah. holy smokes move. It's the sort of move that you... And Senti is pointing out, uh, rightly so, that Justin Tan played his move with only 10 seconds on the clock. It's quite incredible. Great move. Um, Nicholas Pert looks like he's on the verge of winning. Rook c7, rook h d8, you would assume. And by the way, Paul Robson in the chat, uh, when you were pointing out earlier, someone was asking, why should I go premium or why yeah. is the membership? And he said, right, you convinced me. And he wasn't a premium member when the show started, but he is now. So, well done, Lawrence. There and we go. And I Paul. don't get anything for that. <laughs> I don't get a dime for that. That's just unbelievable. Unbelievable. Um, Rook c7. Rook hd8. I think Nick's idea is he wants to go bishop c4, attacking this guy. And how do you defend it? Because if you go f6, I go bishop e6, and I give in. Mm -hmm. So what do you do here? You have to defend the knight because bishop is hanging, so you do play this. Oops. And if bishop c4, you have to... Play bishop f6. Bishop f6, right. But this looks... This looks so bad. Ooh, what am I doing? Rook hd8, maybe I can just go here. So yeah. so dumb. I can just go bishop b5. No, this is just... Uh, looks. I think it's over. I think uh, Nick is... And by the way... Um, yeah. Tamash Fordo did lose to, what's his first name? Marcus Osborne. Great yeah, result Mar yeah. for Marcus Osborne today against the Grandmaster Tamash Fodor. So it means that Marcus Osborne is on... And Paul five. Robson, you said you aren't getting a dime, but he will get you a point. There we go. <laughs> That's more than a dime. Yeah, Yavanka is just over. She's been yeah. blasted. And this whole opening idea i told this you i didn't like seven, yeah. and cut to put the king on f8 and then to have to expand like this to then get your king out i mean this was just a this was a master game by mm -hmm. nicholas Pert. this was just genius yeah. genius game by nick that means nick is going to be on five and a half so he's still in the, the mix. hunt yeah peter wells has put his pawn on a6 that's a very sensible decision in my opinion Opinion because it's very useful there. A, you can't take it, and B, it's very close to queening. So, is Peter? Yeah, I'm oh, very curious about this game. Oh. Yeah, just punt the B pawn when you've got a pass pawn. Just go, go, go. Mm. No, that's that's bad. That's that's winning for one. <laughs> um, not sure. And Prime of the saying Queen B6 was the blunder. I'm not sure which game he's talking about. And Zelensen is asking if Palisa will lose on time. I no. don't think anyone's going to lose on time because they do have a thirty second increment. No, he's got like, he's got two minutes and he he's he's already reached move forty, yeah. so he's not gonna lose on uh, Mark Heblin gave a check. Justin just moved over to F2 without too much difficulty. And now, yeah, he's winning a... Yeah, Mark's going to have to play Queen takes D7. That looks like the only move. Yeah. Justin's going to take on C2. Reach move 40, get up, go to the toilet, wash his face, get a drink, and he's going to think, yeah. I actually, barring a complete nightmare, cannot lose this. And Mickey has played a move. Uh, he went... 
Queen D6 and yeah, David and immediately went rook E5. Right, yeah, I mean, that's just such an obvious move because you can double on the F file, you can triple on the G file. Yeah. Uh, and uh, I don't think David can be worse. I'm not sure if it's better, but I'm not sure if it's um, enough. But let's go back to the Eggy game because this is really exciting. Mm. And 96 was played by Keith. Now that looks fishy, but maybe it's okay. But it looks. <sighs> so now we get another chance at f5. Yeah, because the thing is, hold on, f5, if you go back to d4, now I can give a check. Mm -hmm. And if you go here, now I can play mm -hmm. g takes f6, which is completely winning. So f5, and if you go back, so I give a check. But hold on, this is just completely... Even g6 might be in the air. Oh, g6 could be very strong. That could be very strong, Fiona, because takes, takes, threaten, check, my yeah, queen is open, yeah. rook here. No! f5, eggy! But it's actually quite an obvious move as well, right? Because, yeah. like, you see that... Where so, else can... I mean, yeah. Well, no, knight c4... So, hold on, knight c5? But can I just go... Let's have a think. Can I go b4? Takes, takes, so knight e4. Take rook c7. But I'm also defending f7. That's f6. true. Fine. That's very important and very true. But here, I also have ideas like here. Mm-hmm. Very unpleasant. Oof. F5. What's the time situation? 17 minutes. Yeah, for plenty of minutes. time yeah. for Eggy. Plenty of time to see this. I think he will play F5 now. Yeah, because it's just such a logical move. Yeah. I mean, it, it, it's logical, but also it's hard because you've just gone G5 to put the bishop there, but it just requires a bit of very basic calculation. Uh, yeah, I mean, it's all sort of move by move now. It is calculation. I think he is rather good at calculation. I think his weakness... Maybe is bishop g4, though. We make a... Hmm? Maybe you can just do this, bishop because G4. here mm -hmm. I've still got this check. This is really bad. Ah, oh, there's probably a few good moves here for Egg. And uh, Mickey Adams is counter-attacking on the queen side. No. <laughs> sort of. No. It's <laughs> one little pawn. Puh. Puh. I wouldn't get out, get out of bed for that. I'll go here. Mm -hmm. I'll threaten mate. See what you'll probably go here. I'm not sure. Do I want to move one of these pawns or do I? Well, I'm threatening mate. No, so. I understand that, but I was wondering if I could just go with key eight. Can't do. Can't. I'll come to the f7 square mm -hmm. and I'll say thank you very much. I was thinking of queen h6, but it's not. I'll yeah. just take on c7. No, okay. Okay, so if I go h6 uh, instead of rook e8. Yeah. H6 makes a lot more sense. Now, probably, do I want to go H5? I'll go H5. You want to punt this, obviously. Of course. I'll go here. Want to go Queen D4? <laughs> what are you? OK, you are going to make me. Mm. I mean, of course, I can here just play A3. But I don't know if I want to invite b5, b4. That is the problem. And David did play a3 with three seconds left. So he does invite now. Now there's a serious counterattack with b5. So... I think David's not going to have a great time here with his 30 seconds on the clock. Ooh, what did Mark Hebden do? He gave a check on c5 and king g3. What's this about? Ah, he wants to go rook f8. But rook f8. Can I go rook f7? I'm also looking at this move. Mm -hmm. How about that little <laughs> shot? Mm -hmm. You can't take because of mate. If you take my queen, I take your queen. And then you play rook takes f3 check, and I want to cry. <laughs> then I go and cry for a bit. And then I'm going to go and cry. So I can't do that. But I can uh, just go rook f7, can't I? Of course you can. Like a normal human being would, but I'm just not... Nor also, hold on. Wait, wait, wait. Similar idea. Hold on. 
He's on move 40. What about... What about this? Ah, he has time. Ah, he's plenty. He has time. Yeah. What are you going to do after knight e4? Mm -hmm. Your move. Well, you have to defend. So if you take, mm -hmm. I'd definitely say, and this is definitely yeah. over because there's mate at the back. Okay. So, so I have to go queen. Queen somewhere. Queen b4, queen a3. a3 maybe. You want to go queen a3. And now, coup de gras. Rook d8. No, <laughs> what am I doing? Huh. Threatening a little checkmate. Mm -hmm. And if I go g6, you still make And then I checkmate you. Yeah. What do you think? That's cute, no? It's very nice. I think that works as well, which is much to my surprise. Yeah. That seems to be over. Life is not easy. Someone, uh, Pramod is wondering if Martin Brown is better against Richard Perth. Is that the French or is that the Tarsh? Richard, oh my god, Richard Pert, is he losing? Oof. Uh, what is going on? Well, he's two pawns up, but there are some mating, mate threat issues, so rook a8 is an issue. And again, this is on pre. I don't know, maybe. And we had another couple of moves. Uh, Mickey Adams did play b5. Yeah. B5 and rook hf1, mm. as predicted. And now Mickey's going to have to give some way for his king. Uh, Nicholas Pert has won, by the way, ladies and gentlemen, a destruction of Yovanka Huska. Uh, what happened? Mickey played uh, rook g8. Yeah. yeah, that makes a lot of sense as well. And... Here, David played king c1. Yeah, this is basically it with the idea that if b4, you can now take, take, and probably take on e5, and there's no a3, which would pin me here. So he plays king c1. And now he's still got to make 14 moves. Yeah. Um, move like c5, and b4 makes a lot of sense. Lots of moves here. I'm not sure what to make of this position, really. No. Eggy yet to move. He didn't play a five yet. No, he can play. He can What's his time situation? Ten, Ten minutes. minutes. More than enough time. Peter Wells played rook a five with the idea of going rook b five and and uh, mm -hmm. and uh, got him maybe here here maybe you have to go back. There's no threat here, so maybe we go back and we just say okay. What's the big deal? And Pramod reckons Adams will win this because it's tough to defend in time trouble rather than attack. Possibly. Possibly. Should point out Chris Ward as well and Peter Batcher both on four and a half. This is just a dream position for White. Chris Ward playing look what looks like a really good game. He's just going to swap rooks. He's got a beautiful e pawn. The queen can mm -hmm. come in. And there's just no counter because this knight yeah. is just so good so I expect a Chris Ward win which would mean he will be on one of the top boards tomorrow. Absolutely. Big time. I think let's we should stick with the top two boards probably until time control. Maybe top three boards that are still running. We will reach time control 20 minutes half an hour from now. Mm -hmm. What is Mickey Adams going to do? I think he'll go c5. c5 is a very, very standard move here to be able to play b4 and keep uh, the queen close to the king. So, c, c. How much do you think a player like Mickey, uh, with as much experience as Mickey, is influenced by his opponent's, his opponent's time trouble? Um, how much does he think, oh, I should find the trickiest move or maybe play a bit quicker, or do you think he doesn't? Um... Probably not against David, against some other people, maybe, but no, nah, and he's just played c5. So this is now a kind of tricky decision for David. Um, 
he realizes that there isn't really yeah i think the problem is as opposed to what you were saying earlier he doesn't have any obvious Mm. moves now really well he just played h5 that was an obvious move Mm -hmm. and if b4 he's just going to ignore it he's going to allow b takes a3 b takes a3 so the question is, but what's he going to do here? Queen e3 or something? Yeah, but then I would take on a3. Okay. And play c4. Maybe I'll just take it. Yeah. And say, okay. Mm-hmm. What you going to do? Okay. I mean, I can't really create any counter plan to b5. Justin has played knight e4, ladies and gentlemen, and he's going to follow that up with either knight eg5 or knight f6. Mm-hmm. Um, probably knight f6 because it's cuter, and he's going to win. I think we're going to see resignation here very soon. Yeah, and that will mean that Justin Tan will be on uh, 5, having only lost to Mickey, Mickey yeah. and means that he's on for a fantastic performance. Great stuff by the young Justin Tan. Um, I can just picture Eggy, you know. Like, he's going to be in such deep thought. He's going to be bright red. But he, he will know he's a lot better now. He will be looking for the blow. I'm very curious to see whether he's going to play F5. You said time wasn't a problem, but it's starting. He's starting to be quite short. He's Still- on... I mean, he has to calculate here, but I mean, for me, it looks like quite a simple line to calculate. Um, Let's show it again for those. So, yeah, so my line is f5, and the problem is if you go knight d4, this just runs into rook c7 Mm -hmm. check. You can't block because of g takes f6. And if king e8, well, I mean so surprised if you can survive this with black just check and then there's no threat and I don't know maybe some some move like this I'm getting very nervous like our times must be off by a few seconds but Mickey played before and on my just 24 window um, David ran out of time yeah he, he, he won't have run out of time. he won't but so f5, so knight d4 looks bad. So knight c5 is the other main move. But here I was just looking at b4. Let's assume there's an exchange. He takes, I play rook c7 check. If the king goes anywhere, queen mm-hmm. d5 looks fatal. And if you block with the rook, I take take and go queen d5 anyway with the idea of check and taking the knight. And that just looks hopeless for Keith. Yep. So there's not really that much to analyze, I don't think, unless I'm missing something so clear here. But it doesn't feel like I am, to be honest. There are all forcing moves. Any queen moves here? I don't know. This is what I would play. What if I go back with the knight? I mean, that must just be horrible. Where? Uh, yeah, knight c5, b4. Oh, you want to go knight d7? Yeah, but doesn't but look great, does that's it? That's just... Yeah. Uh, the bishop can come, the queen. Mm. This is just finito. Also, I like the move G, oh, not GH6, but that might G6. be. I like G6, just to mm. give myself some more squares. To yeah, play it's, with. Just, it's interesting. Rook C6. Oh, it's just co- completely capitulation. Capitulation. I'm wondering if we have, uh, we must either have a problem on board one that we're not receiving moves, or we were off by a few minutes, which I also would be extremely. Surprise about no normally we're good. So what normally happens is um, That if the DG, if if there's some kind of uh, If there's no if somehow the DGT boards don't pair up mm-hmm. we can lose the we can lose the, the The broadcast, but let's just have a look so we we yeah, on the main board on, on Okay, so let's just show that. Yeah, so rook g one, rook e six is on the board. Queen e three, sorry, queen e three, h six, rook g one, with the idea of rook g six is coming in. So rook e six and rook f seven. 
is now on the board. Um, Justin Tan has won, by the way. Mark Hebden has resigned. So great win for Justin and making Mark's tournament even more miserable. Yep. Really, really nice game by Justin, I have to mm. say. Yeah, a very, very good game by Justin. Congratulations to him. Mm -mm -mm. Um, yes. And Rook F7 by David. He has a minute 49 according to this. Um... And in the Eggy game, let's have a look because we have we are, it looks like we what did he do? He took on F six, Eggy. Eggy actually took on F six. Does this mean none of our games are Rook C six? We might be down, we might have to do this yeah. manually until we get to um the board. And is he, is Eggy bungling this? Rook C six? Uh, queen d4. What is he doing? F e5, d5. Unless he's got a knockout here, he's re ah no, he's going wrong. Eggy is going so wrong. I think Queenie. Well, it, maybe it's maybe it's okay still, but shoo, it was just so winning before. Maybe now he wants to give a check, give some checks. Still, obviously. You know, got an attack. You so. know what I think we should do? I think we should go on a very quick break because uh, it's quite important we get the moves properly now. Players will be in time trouble. Get this fixed and then be back in a second. What do you reckon? Yeah, we can do that. Okay, stay tuned, guys. We'll be right back.
Hello everybody and welcome back. Thanks for staying with us. We've just got the uh, transmission sorted out. We've got the moves and Fiona, it looks as though Eggie yep. has bungled it. Um, not completely bungled it to be losing, but we've got this position. We said it was around here after 96. He had a number of good moves. Bishop g4, f5 looked absolutely crushing. Um, but we now have the following position. Um, he, he allowed um, Keith to get active. And what's going on here? Well, maybe... Oh, we should maybe show people boards as well. <laughs> ah, that would be useful. <laughs> this is the current position. Uh, and maybe it's still good for white. I mean, his position was so good, but... It's quite ironic that he missed f5 twice. f5 seemed to be very yeah. strong two times. Right. Okay, let's go to the top board. I think Aggie might still have a microscopical advantage. David Howe's got five seconds, according to our boards. Maybe it's David who's wrecking our broadcast all the time. Probably. And he played rook f1 with four seconds, apparently. So rook f1. And how is David doing? Because David Howe, is he better or...? As usual, the computer isn't fast. The computer is never fast. And by the way, we should point out Peter Wells against David Howe. Against Gawain Jones. Uh, against uh, Gawain Jones. Has Peter fluffed it? Because I was thinking about this, allowing the king to slip to h7. What do you do now when you've got no time left, Peter Wells, and you're facing this kind of... Well, oh my goodness, he took... A what happened? So played king h3. King h3, and now this? Oh dear. Oh my god. This looks horrific for... Uh, this is just probably over, right? Can I take on h6? I mean, you can... Probably not. <laughs> well, minimum is I have this. Mm -hmm. yeah, that's Absolute good. minimum. Yeah. Yeah, no, no. So I think Gawain is, is going to win. Can I do anything? Can you do anything? Well, not really, given that... Well, you have to go active, don't you? You have to go check here and then try and mate me. And just... Or try and do something. You, you have to be active, but... Oh, no. He did what you said. No, this is just hopeless. He just did what we looked at. Yeah. That's just hopeless. He's probably going to He's going to resign. Yeah. Oh, poor Peter. But, you know, congratulations to Gawain yeah. for picking a, a line that, um, you know, was practically difficult to play against. And that's that's the... That's the big thing there. I'm muttering in the background because someone's saying Keith's, uh, Keith has counter-blundered. Keith has counter-blundered? Oh my goodness. But our moves not this is a blunder fest of a day. Bishop c2, knight f4 on the board. And why can't I go rook d1 here? Like, rook d1 just looks so simple. Rook d1 is just... Finito, or what is going on? Is Eggy going to get his big break here? What is going on? So what's the position on the board This now? is the position on the board after knight f4. It's Eggy to play, but I mean rook d1 is just simple, no? Pin the queen. Queen takes e5 is in the air. I mean, this is just really simple stuff, rook d1. I don't see... Ah, he's probably going to go rook g1, but now my king can very neatly tuck itself away on a2, out of harm's way. And in the meantime, I continue my attack. Looks beautiful. Mm -hmm. um, so let's see. Mickey, by the way, has taken on f7 here, so we've now got... This position, which looks like... Why did he take on f7 and not on f1? 
to leave the rook less active because on f7 the rook is active maybe he just wants to go maybe he wants to just go rook f8 maybe this is his idea i think that's going to end in a draw i've got a feeling i got a feeling and eggy what happened king f8 what he didn't go rook d1 or maybe he wants to do it now but it was just better before no i don't Blunderfest. Blunderfest today. Too many blunders. Too many blunders. In, in the meantime... The... Yeah, I don't... I don't understand anything that these guys are doing. Eggy's got three minutes. I don't know why he's not... Um... And Mickey went c6. Yeah, c6 is a very good move as well. Just getting out the way. Also, Mickey's got opportunities to exchange queens in yeah. a must-need scenario. Although I don't think he'll do that. Problem is, white just doesn't have an attack now. There, there, white just doesn't have any pieces, no pawn breaks. Is Mickey better? No, probably not. Probably not. But you have to be kind of accurate here and David's still got four moves to make what's he gonna do he played King b2 kind of an odd move but might be fine I'm very confused about what's very confused about game. everything today in the eggy game what happened rook c7 king f8 still on the board but why not just rook c1 that's just so logical just don't understand. Uh, Peter Wells against Gawain Jones has reached his position. And there's really just nothing here for Peter at all. No. No, he's just going to resign after realising he's probably furious with himself. Mm. If I know Peter, he's absolutely yeah. going to be really furious with himself. Um, yeah, okay, still thinking. Eggy is down to a minute and a half. Still yeah, has to Eggy, play five moves. Eggy just needs to play normal moves now. Yeah. So. And maybe Mickey's smelling a bit of blood here. Queen d1. Great move by Mickey. Hitting h5. But preparing rook b8 yeah. check. Yeah. Oof. And Davy boy with 23 seconds. Yeah. Oh my god. Maybe Davy's in. A bit of trouble here with David such just played rook b7 rook b7 okay that's to cover rook b8 check but now mickey can take this, this pawn on h5 point. and suddenly it's mickey who's got the upper hand and might think he can grind out a win from this unglaublich what was this do you think king b2 was a mistake here yeah think? king b2 was was a terrible move King B2 was a terrible move. Um, but I mean, even before, he, he started to lose the thread, I think, at some point. Yeah, he started to lose the thread. But King B2 is really, really bad. Um, still, no, Eggy hasn't moved. He's got 15 seconds. Eggy has got 13 seconds. He's finally played Rook D1. Why he didn't play this on the move before... I don't know. And now Still very strong now. Keith will go rook d2 or rook g1. Probably rook g1. After which Eggy is forced to take, take, and king a2. It's still strong, but not as strong as before because the king was on e7. Yeah. So there are a lot of checks, but should still be decent for Eggy. He is going to win a5, and he is going to be able to push. So... And Mickey, of course, has taken on h5. Yeah. How many moves to go? Two more two. moves. Still two tricky moves here for David. So what is he going to do? He's just going to play a move. Queen g3, yeah. Queen g3. Still not easy for Mickey to convert. Uh, 
But I think this will be his sort of... I mean, he will be very strong here. Maybe just queen. Mm. Can I go so to easy. e2? Oh, no, yeah, I'm just but I'm gonna, upon, yeah, yeah, I mean, it's not, not completely obvious what the move here is. Maybe, maybe Mickey, he's going to go queen e8. Yeah, mm -hmm. exactly what I thought. He just defends here. Still not completely easy. Um. By the way, Pete, of course... Pete did resign against yeah, Gawain. Yeah, Peter resigned and he'll be very upset yeah. with uh, Gawain. And once we reach time control, we, we're going to have a look at the ending, ending between Richard Palliser and Danny yeah. That is interesting, that yeah. ending. By the way, Chris Ward is showing... Oh, is he showing good stuff here or is he just bungling it? As Chris also bungled it from what looked like a wonderful position. I'm not sure he's got enough for the win here. Don't know, because before it looked as though Chris Ward was just flying high. At some moment around yeah. move 32, he looked completely winning. And he played a duffer move. He could have just taken a pawn on a7. OK, I suggest let's stick with uh, Eggie and Keith. Because yeah. Keith is now down to two minutes. We still mm -hmm. have four moves to go. I think this could be decided now. Maybe, possibly before move 40? No. What do you reckon? No. No, it won't be. Unless it's a massive blunder. Oh We've had a few, fair few blunders Huge in this blunders, game. Yeah. Yeah. No, not, not a very good game from Keith. Better game from Eggy, but he missing really... Chances, yeah, missing yeah. a load of chances. So, but I, I mean, a lot of people say this, of course, I'm not going to say anything new, but uh, converting a uh, winning position is always, it's a lot easier for us here than it is. Of course it is. I'm the, the board. I'm the first to admit that. I mean, of course it is. But when they are, you know, of this level, you there's a, not an expectancy, yeah. but some kind of, yeah. Still no move from Keith? Nothing. Unless we would have at uh, official. Unless we're not receiving moves. Oh, there was a move, yeah. He played rook g1. Takes, queen takes is on the board. King a2 played immediately, of course. Mm -hmm. So what is Eggy? Eggy is a pawn up. Eggy is. He's also one up, but it's more important that he's kind yeah. of got a number of threats. But it's not easy because Keith's got squares for his pieces. He's got a bit of counterplay, but there is no mate. I, I think Eggy should be a lot better. Yeah. The question is, how is Keith defending now? Because I guess you don't want to drop the e5 pawn. Yeah. I don't know quite what I'd do here. Um, yeah, doesn't, because even here, I mean, what do I do against this move? Mm. Can't defend. Maybe so. he's going to, Keith needs to find a very good move here. Yeah, and he's down to a minute. Yeah, probably 96 is the right move, because you hit the rook. And then at least here you can, you know, queen d4. Or, yeah, he played he 96. Say, yeah. So Eggy will play rook c3. I'm pretty sure about that. There's no other square that really makes sense for this rook. Because knight d4 hits bishop and queen. So mm -hmm. I expect rook c3. This is also the most natural move. And you take one of these pawns and pretend that you're winning. Which can happen. What about Mr. Howell? David got there with King C3, Queen E6. So, so they did now reach time for him. Yeah, and yeah. Mickey is just playing for two results here. So great turnaround by Mickey. Mm -hmm. um, Mr. Eggy. 
Eggy, let's stay with this to the time control. Maybe he will go rook c6. I don't know where he's going to go. He needs to make a move soon. How long has he got? Oh, he played seconds. rook b7. I thought that walks into skewers and... No, it also makes sense. But, yeah. But now, queen h2. Protecting, attacking, the rook comes. Yeah. What if I take now on... No, I've, okay, I've lost count of how many pieces I've Queen landed, H2 is, is, is very strong. Is Queen H2 on the board? No, but it's very strong. And I think White would have to find Bishop D3, which is really not an easy move to mm. find. He'll have to find it with a minute on the clock as if well. If Keith finds Queen yeah. H2. Keith could quite easily go Queen C5 here, though. That's a Keithy kind of move as well. Then do I have no, to? No, but this is great for white. Yeah. Because yeah. I give in, I give in pawns and yeah. Now he found it. Great move by Keith, mm -hmm. the 39th. And now it's all up to Eggy. What's he gonna do? Ooh, could be tricky. Has to find Bishop D3. If not, I think Black is doing just fine. Any Bishop, you know, a move like Bishop B1. You have to analyze rook yeah. d2. This is a tough spot here for Eggy. Eggy's got uh, 38, and it's always on move 40 when you've got yeah. the critical move. Queen f1 is also very interesting. Just threatening mate. I mean, let's also not forget Keith will also have to find another move before making time control. Yeah, but his moves are a lot easier. Yeah. Even if after moves like queen f1? Yeah, but here, I mean, you just do anything, queen f4, or just protect against mate. I mean, there are only so many. And, and he, he played. did play queen f4. Good move, Eggy. Good move. Very, very good. And now Keith will probably go queen f4. And we'll reach a position which has improved massively for Keith. And Eggy's got a lot to do, mm -hmm. basically. Poor old Eggy. Let's just stay with this because Keith has got. Yeah. What are his options? What can he even do? Knight uh, f4? Knight f4. No, he played queen f4. Of course he did. Yeah. It's Keith. So they've reached time control, so they're going to have a think now. Um, David has reached time control. Richard and Danny reached time control a long time ago. And it looks as though. Richard is, is it winning? It looks close. Looks like he's making a lot of progress. Because the rooks are coming down. Yeah. So is it winning? I mean, what's Danny going to do now? I don't understand. If here, oops. If here, here, what's the problem? So I'm just threatening to take on f7. I give a check, you go here. And then Maybe I just take. Do you take my pawn, yeah. Maybe I just take him you off. You probably have to take. Yeah, and just say okay. Yeah, because this is actually, this is actually okay. Except that's mate. Yeah, <laughs> I was just gonna say. This is not okay. So, ah, yeah, so you have to do this. You have to go here, and you have to just keep on attacking this rook. And it's probably okay for Danny, is my estimate. My estimation should be a draw. Okay, so the question is, can he keep the b pawn? I guess? Mm, mm, possibly. But then again, maybe not. And how is uh, Richard Pert doing? Richard Pert is doing just fine in life. And on the board, he's getting beaten up. 
Losing. Pawns down. Yeah. Just losing. Three pawns down, no attack. Black is solid. Yeah. And Richard has got 25 seconds according but to... But he's just made time control. Right. Let's have a look. Yeah. No. Terrible day at the office so far yeah. for Richard. He's going to need a... He's going to need a swindle of the century to get out of this. And even John M's... Is John M's winning? Check. Might just be winning for John, but it wouldn't surprise me if it's, it's a draw. It's very tricky. I mean, it's so... All these queen and things. So wouldn't tricky. surprise me if it's a draw. Yeah. So... I always think in queen endings, it's not the number of pawns, but how far advanced they are. Sometimes, it depends. Sometimes, so that one pawn mm. by Oscar Hackner can cancel out. And here after knight f6, um, well, immediately I see a tactic of rook to hg6. Followed by f5, but I assume Chris's idea is to go here or something. So... You can't take this because of check. Um, so the question is, but it feels winning for white. Or at least very close. Mm -hmm. Maybe it's not. Maybe it's just about okay. Is Chris going to hold on here? Very difficult to say. If I take on... Uh, if I play f5, you take on... Yeah, I can take on... Well, I, if I take here, here, here... I was wondering, I want to do something on that diagonal, like bishop c3. Yeah, this could be dangerous. This could be very bad. So f5, huh? So probably I have to take... Do I have... I was looking at something like queen h5. No, I don't think no. there's anything here. And he did take on g6. And if I go queen takes e4, what's his idea? Maybe he just wants to take, take, and go like rook c6 or something, you know? And just play a much better, if not winning, ending. Yeah, so Chris in, in trouble against mm. Dietmar. Our friend Dietmar Kolbus. Hold the door. What's going on? What's that? David's king doing? David is uh, counter-attacking with his king. King b4. Just wants to pick up a pawn, maybe. But even that runs into queen c4 check. Don't understand king b4 that much. Uh, yeah, don't understand that move. Mm -hmm. That's all. Do you understand that move? Uh, he wants to grab a pawn. <laughs> but then queen c4 check anyway, yeah. so. Maybe now if you're uh, Mickey, you just start advancing. It's quite difficult to advance these pawns, though, with the rook here. Like play g5, g4. Yeah. No. Interesting. I actually think we should go for a proper break yeah, now. Yeah, let's do that. Um, because we're going to be here for at least another hour, I would say with these games. Three critical games going on. Eggleston versus Arkel, which is just another game starting, really. Yeah. Hal They've versus Adams. they started a lot of different games today. Yeah, so it's a new game there. Yeah. And we've got Palliser versus Gormali, which should end in a draw, but all three crucial for the tournament. Uh, we'll be right back. Stay tuned. And in the meantime, do as... Who was the chap who became premium? What was his Paul. name? Paul. Paul. Do as Paul did. Became premium. Doesn't regret it at all. Have fun. See you soon.
Hello everybody, my name is Jan Gustafsson and I have now taken over this program. I have literally no idea what's happened all day. I just got back to the office and I saw Lawrence as he tends to sit there on a 40 minute break, not being in any hurry whatsoever. So I thought the good people watching the British Championship must be very curious to find out what is happening. And I just can't wait for the guy. Therefore, let's jump straight into the action with the game David Howell, Michael Adams. Is Howell worse? Looks worse to me. Hmm. They've made the time control. Move 43. There's no checkmate on G7 and the king does look a little funny on A5. Let's first impressions. So if you do something like this, you probably get checkmated, yeah? Maybe no, re no need to checkmate, you can just take here. Oh, look who's back. I took over the show, I hope you don't mind. <laughs> we got a hijacker. <clears throat> I only trash talked you a little bit, like nothing, nothing Stay. too bad. Stay, enjoy. <laughs> what is David Howe's cool. king doing on A5? That's what I was trying to figure out. They got this position, queen e5, queen d3. And it's a draw? Computer says rook b8 equal, but <laughs> with my human eyes, this struck me as a little worrisome, isn't it? Incredible, no? Even rook b8, which makes sense to exchange a rook and try to survive, because it gives the king a little more Maybe space. just takes, takes him back, yeah? King h7 and queen e5. Takes king h7. How does white survive? Queen e5 back. Do you have a perpetual? Oh, that's made in one. <laughs> yeah. I'm good at blundering made in ones. That's I nearly had a perpetual. That is true. Just e5, mm. huh? And the king's too active. Run! Wow. I've been taught during my junior years that in queen end games, it's very important to have passed pawns. Right. Don't know why, but apparently you can push them and they're more important than mm. having many pawns. That's incredible. Okay. Still, David Howell fighting for a draw. Let's get to the important game. How's how's your boy? Well, it's Eggleston. it's been such a game. He was playing so brilliantly. Keith played horribly in the opening. I saw the opening before. It was just I a left disaster. And I did think Eggy, as people seem to call him, had a very good position. Uh, it was around here where actually he had a winning position. Just any move is good, but f5 is just completely crushing because the rook enters and, um, you know, even here you can just give check and you can't block because of g takes f6. So f5 was just winning in various ways. Instead, we went down a murky line. There were mistakes all over the place near the time scramble. Keith got back into it and then he played some dodgy moves and then Eggy was better again. And it was just up and it's down. A roller coaster. It was a roller coaster. And then finally we get this position, which looks still great for Eggy because he's got now safe king, great bishop. An A pawn. And an A pawn which can fly up the board and you take white all day. Of course. But Keithy has got a little guy here. Yeah, I, it's but not... the white king is so much safer even after pushing the A pawn. Has to be excellent for white. Yeah, it still has to be great. Of course it does. So. Eggy's still on, and you know, were Eggy to win this, he will be leader. Who would have thought yeah. it? Can the extra be stopped in this tournament? I think he's got excellent chances. Oh, uh, here we go again. We did do this the other day, didn't we? I think so, but yeah. I still... You still have bad memories from it? Yeah, and I also haven't consulted a dictionary to come up with more egg words. Yeah. But I did think that he would make his exit from the top group today. Yeah, me too. Not uh, really. No. Um, Richard, what else happened? PKW. Um, <laughs> he he was a queen up, right? How did he lose? PK. Um, this already looks messy, but earlier. No. I maybe mean, it's White wasn't winning, but. No. I mean, basically, this was the critical moment after queen c6. Really interesting moment. The reason why after bishop takes e5, he went queen c6 and not queen d7 was because bishop takes h7 check was a genuine concern to Gawain with the very famous queen h5, king j, and bishop takes g7. Laska style. 
Yeah, and this looks very. Does this work though? I'm not sure. Well, immediately this the the human eye sees this move, and this looks very dangerous. No. Bishop g5. Yeah, this is basically you know you have to analyze this stuff and. Scary for sure. Yeah, it's scary from afar. So you understand why Gawain did what he did, which is a very interesting idea he just took. Why not? Ah, queen d7 is still Queen d7 is the point, yeah. Gotcha. So here, and basically my instinct was that he probably just about has enough comp here, but it's really with excellent play. I don't know. I mean, black might survive once in a while, but to yeah. win this strikes me as... Anyway, oh. uh, it looked as though Gawain was getting back into it around here. And, well, it looked as though around here, actually, that um, Peter just found a way to kind of stabilize. But uh, he started What's to... What's his a4 business? He wants to go a4, a5, but it looked a bit but slow. Doesn't it just give black a pass pawn? Yes, but it also... Nah, it's too slow. Yeah, so and then... I guess Peter ran low on time and they ran find very him low. And then he, in this move, b3, he went rook b5 and rook c8. And it was around here, h takes g7, and now a really good move, h6. But here already looks unpleasant dealing with a b pawn. Like. Yeah. And suddenly uh, it all went wrong for Peter. So, really unfortunate day for him. And yeah, basically. Lost the thread and lost. So three key games going on. Four, actually. Palliser, Gormali. This looks like it should be a draw. Yep. I think. I just don't think Pally's got enough. Another actual key game is Chris Ward versus Peter Batchelor because were Chris to win this, he would be on five and a half. It's not that key, though, is it? It's well, key-ish. It could be joint leader after the round. Oh, joint leader, really? Yeah. If there's a draw in... Oh, these game. guys draw. What happened here, though? Oof. What the... David didn't play rook b8, but king b6. In for the win. Steiner Plank style. Up. King is a strong piece, grabbing the c-pawn with his king. The computer doesn't approve, but it's a fun little position. Still. You take black, right? He has his passed a-pawn. Yeah. Save king, pawn up. Nah, Nick is gonna. I'd, Nick is gonna I'd lose with either, I'd lose with either color, but you know. I'm not sure you would. Yeah. Depends to whom. Like Mickey, sure, but David, maybe you could draw once in a while. I have got the last time I did with play Black, David. I, mean. I I did draw because you I know did. each other. Well, you know Mickey too, but I think you could get into David's head once in a while. Possibly. Um, that would be interesting to see how this works out. And in the Eggy game, he went Queen B3. Probably another bad move, but. Why doesn't he push his A-pawn? I don't know. Also, knight c5, what's his point? Queen g3. Oh, queen queen g3, g3 also works here. Um, yeah, it still looks good for Eggy, doesn't it? But, but just What push. kind of move is queen b3? Just the push. queen was nice on b4. What does he want? He wants to... He wants to, he wants to control wants to this H-pawn. No, he wants to control this H-pawn. That's such a weird move. Maybe he wants I don't to like take. this move one bit. Yeah. He's not threatening rook f7, you just take with the king. No, I don't get it. Just h4? What's, what's I don't the follow-up here? I don't know. I really don't know. Egg is drifting a little bit. Yeah, he's... Uh... Oh, we've got people in the chat still, though. We've got a lot of chat going wow. on. We actually converted to some people to premium. Such was my hard selling <laughs> during the... <laughs> you are a born salesman. I really am. And I don't get a cent from it, you know? Where's my where's my kickback? That's where's so my sick. commission? You want a little taste? Yeah, I want a little taste, you know? Um, mm. Neither no, do I, actually. I know. Nobody does. Uh, so what do we have here? Yeah, Paul Robson. Thank you for becoming premium, Paul. There he goes. There we go. Um... Anybody else? Jack Smith. Paul Robson, is, he's the guy who was going for a beer with Eggy. That's on right, Wednesday, he's right? going to go See, for yeah, a beer. I know, I know people. Yeah, Paul Robson, if he's got enough money for a beer, he's got enough money to become premium, in my opinion. Depends um, on the size of the beer. Anyway. So, are we expecting a win here? I don't know, I don't think it's so easy to win this. I think Mickey's going to win this, no problem whatsoever. He's going to put his queen somewhere, and he's going to push his A-pawn, and then David's going to try to do something active to push a c-pawn, 
Then he's gonna run into a vicious counterattack. But the main problem is the A point is strong. Whatever. This is the comp move. Let's play the comp move. Just A3 next. What are you ever gonna do? I think it's fairly hopeless. Ah, but this ending is. Is this hopeless? Would no, I'm not taking. I gotta leave the queens on. <clears throat> this is a yeah. nice diagonal. I think it's just totally lost. But like here. A3, run, run. I know, run. but I wanna just. You can't always get what you want. Why can I not do this? Because of rook takes. Oh, and there's a something here, no? It's counter check. Swish and shuffle. Yeah. Yeah. Queen f5. Rook if my king six. were not here, it would be an idea. So it is maybe a nice that's idea. an idea. Mickey played queen d3, which is probably just as good. These are the positions, ladies and gentlemen, that computers play infinitely better than humans. Isn't that any position? No. Yeah. No. Yeah. Not any position. Like 98.998% of positions. Just, no. Yeah. Really? Depends on the human. But let's say better than Magnus Carlsen, 99.98. But he's a horrible player. That's what I'm saying. Oh, okay. No, but seriously, I, I believe computers still have some small weaknesses. Sometimes they can't figure out a fortress immediately or stuff like that. But in general, they're just very, very strong. They are just very strong. You're they right. are better than humans pretty much everywhere. Mm. Palace of Gormali looks like a draw because you just Still keep does, hold yeah. of the rooks. You attack them all the time with your king. It's very important just to do this. And even if they do this, this feels like I'm... Am I bungling it? Nah. Maybe Still. you're bungling it. Yeah. Maybe you just come. How did you bungle this? I don't know. He gave a check. I suppose I should just go here, right? And now there are no more checks. But somehow. I... Still, rook e5 isn't on the same topic. We need counterplay. Queen b7, queen f3. Never easy to defend this with the queen, but. Queen should be active enough, but there's still work to be done. Anyway, let's have a look. Check. King g1 is queen probably a mistake. Yeah. <laughs> Cha ching. Boom. So king h2. Yep. Queen f3. King g1. King g1. H4. Check king g2, and I'm running off checks. Yeah? No more checks. How are you going to pay the bills? That's what I'm saying. So, king. It's never easy, is it? Because the queen is always just so active. But yeah, but here queen d1 was a mistake because of king g2. Right. So you have to do okay, some, but that also some makes witness, but this sense. looks strong. Yeah. Can't allow this. Apparently. Nah, it should be a draw. Okay, uh, so Davy Boy Keith played queen b3, uh, rook e8. Don't know about that move. That looks very slow. Why are they playing so slow? I don't know, but you explained to me Keith's style the other day, and he likes to have stuff covered, you know, yeah. slowly. So this move is kind of in style. But I mean, this is why his, this this whole opening, I didn't understand why Keith played it. It he doesn't just, suit his style, it right? It just doesn't suit him at all. I agree with that. And he was just in trouble so early on. I mean, how no, he didn't seem to know the theory. D6 is a bad move as far as I can tell. Yeah. Um, still, in, Aggie still has to push the A-pawn. In Ward versus Batcher, it doesn't look like Chris is breaking through here, does it? Why? Where would he ever break through? Is well, it past before, a point? hold on a second, before around here, it looks as though he had some slight chances, but maybe not even. Maybe. What's, what's the plan? H4, well, H5 is yeah, sort like, of the only idea. So here, oh, yeah, there, but H5. there was a moment where... He had a chance to go h5, but yeah, it's still probably... Yeah, maybe. Yeah. What happens? Probably you just take yeah, it. Yeah, and, and the you problem have to is deal with this, huh? You've got a... Knight h4, king d5, and you might lose. Even this move. Even here, can't I? Somewhere. 
Yeah, yeah the H pawn is too nasty. Yeah, F5, H4, and the race is probably not going to end well. Yeah. Knights just don't defend well against H pawns. So Chris is trying to find a route, but yeah. It's a draw. Should be a draw. Another good result for the young Peter Bachelor. He's been doing well, right? He's yeah. come, come up every day I've been here. And your boy, Richard, having a disaster today against Martin Brown. Just a disastrous position for Richard Pert. Essentially yeah, ending his lost, tournament yeah. against the much lower rated Martin Brown. And that is a deficit of three pawns. And even I'd be quite confident that I'd convert this one. Yeah, you can do that. Put your king on g7, there's never a check, and then push. Something. Push kid. Yeah, yeah, poor Richard Pert. And potentially poor David Howell, because this does not look like it's going to end well for him. Huh? Yeah. Also, he's going to be so short of time soon. You know how it is with the David Howell. How is it? He's always short of time. Well, Eggy's yeah. given a check. Can't be bad, means that he can't checkmate you on this very move. I don't get it. I don't get either move for the last couple of moves. Rook e8 I got, but queen g3, king h8, next move h4. Why are you moving your queen around? Just well, push your a pawn. No, I mean, this makes... What's this point after king h8? Well, if I go a a4 and you go h4, h4, yeah, but now I can go here maybe. I don't know, it feels like he's got his priorities wrong. Uh, some yeah, I'm still unhappy, some... but I don't like this. Is there an attack? Queen f4, queen h5, king g7. Queen takes uh, Irvin. Mm -hmm. No. Just push the a-pawn, maybe. Yeah, but why misplace your pieces? I don't know. Now rook h8, I'm coming. Rook a8? Now rook h8. Oh, rook h8? I don't know, am I blundering things? Rook I'm Rook very takes. capable of blundering things. Oh. <clears throat> anyway. Mm. Yeah, yeah, no, E6 is saying, I don't know. I don't like, I don't like this business. King played, uh, King played, Keith played, King H7. People are worried that Egg is gonna crack. <laughs> yeah. He could very well crack. So, fill me in. What's the standings? Before the round, everybody had five out of six. Not By everybody. Everybody, just, I mean, uh, Gawain, David, and Michael. Yes. Um, and Aggie. And Aggie. And Gawain. No, Gawain had four and a half. It was just David, Michael, and Aggie on the I five. See. And then there was a whole bunch of people, nine people on four and a half. Nick Pert won a very nice game against Ivan Kahuska, so he's on five and a half. Gawain Jones is on five and a half. The bottom line is tomorrow we get, assuming Egg. Mickey's going to win, the showdown. Adams, Aggie. Only if Aggie wins, but nobody knows if Aggie's going to win. Is Maybe he? not. I'm not sure. I'm not sure he's going to win this. Is he going to lose? Mm, it's hard to lose this position. It's so nice. You can lose this. You can lose, but it's unlikely because black can never really activate all that much yeah. without getting checkmated. Yeah. So I'm expecting Aggie to win. I'm expecting Mickey to win. Then tomorrow we're going to have the showdown. Adam Game Smith White day. might be a favorite against Aggie, but Aggie's on no. fire. No, he's a favorite. No, he's not. He is. He is. Um, I gotta go talk to Grandmaster Niklas Huschenbeet, who's great. in the other room. Super. Um, let me pluck my banter bullet, which is at 9 p.m. Assuming you guys are done then. If not, I hope so. it's probably still gonna be at 9 p.m. <laughs> um, and I will lose a lot of bullet games to our dear users, which will be fun for everybody. Probably not, but you should join anyway. Thank you for. Having me. Thanks for coming, Jan. Is this your last day? This is my last day, ladies and gentlemen. Tomorrow I'm going to St. Louis for the Sinkfield Cup, which should be very exciting. And uh, that's, yeah. that's really all I've got to say on the We matter. wish you a good trip. Thanks. A pleasant stay in St. Louis. Say hi to your boy who was at <coughs> Car Caruana. C C and Caruana. yeah, best of luck to him too. Appreciate it. I'm out. Thanks, Jan. Everybody, Jan Gustafsson, perhaps the strongest Grandmaster alive. alive to have ever come from Hamburg. That could be true. Yeah, it's probably true. It's probably true. Um, what we got?
We got Eggy, we got Yan. Eggy's played Queen H3. But Eggy is kind of bungling it. I don't understand any of his moves. After H4, let me change chairs. After H4, what is he trying to do, Eggy? He's kind of not really making much progress. He's had this A pawn he could have thrown down the board. And, uh, well, looks, looks tricky. Now, I, I, I don't, I really don't know what's going to happen. Let's see the chat. We've got, oh, we're getting, oh, I'm being joined again by, it's like a revolving door, this commentary room. Who we got? It's like a blind, I don't know. I know who it is. It's Fiona. Hello. Hello, Fiona. So what did I miss? You missed uh, Eggy playing some strange moves. Yeah, I was, I was actually, I say, what did I miss? But I was actually watching you and Jan oh, <laughs> next okay. door. <laughs> So. But that said, it is kind of, I mean, Eggy, in the worst case scenario, he can just punt this A-pawn. Like, that's if you're really out of ideas. Yeah. But I was agreeing with, the, uh, well, it's easy to agree with Jan, but why would you not rather do that immediately while your queen is still safely placed on B3? I don't know. I don't know what Eggy's thinking, what he's, what, what he's doing, what his life situation is. Would you like to be in Eggy, inside Eggy's uh, mind? Yes. <laughs> I would actually just like to be Eggy for a week. <laughs> what about this one? Palliser versus Gormali. So they pretty much ended up in this position, right? Yeah, King H2 okay. is on the board. And now Danny needs to just find a... What if I go Queen somewhere attacking the F2 upon Queen F3, yeah. I was thinking? Yeah, looks good enough to me. Looks good enough. Looks like it should be a draw somehow. Really looks like it should be a draw, but Queen F5 might even be stronger because mm -hmm. I protect these yeah. pawns. You give a check, and I don't worry about life too much. Cause I, can I, go see, I see that I leave the studio for a minute and Jan finds a way to install the engine. Yes, and it is that time where we're going to be five hours in. My own engine is not working that well. So Queen F5 played, and I think we might get a repetition mm -hmm. like such, because check doesn't really accomplish much after King F8. Yeah. There's really not much to be done here for white. So I think it's time for Richard to accept that it's going to be a draw. Eggy has pinned across the sixth. He likes that. Makes a lot of sense to come down. And it also makes sense because he can now push his pawn um, all the way down. But who knows? The other big game is Rook B8 in Game of the Day. Hal versus Adams. And... I don't know. I, know I, I can't analyze these positions very well because I'm just not strong enough. So we'll just say that Mickey's going to win and move on, shall we? Yeah. But what is... Okay, so he has a check. He has a check Pat on so A's check. Yeah, so check. This all, check already looks serious, right? So basically, King D5 looks losing probably just to A3. Yeah, that's quite obvious. And then there's so check. Probably you have to block here. And then the queen can come back here. And then the rook can return. But now maybe we just push and say you've got no you've got mm -hmm. no checks. If yep. you take, I can even take with the queen. Yeah, the A pawn is getting dangerously close yeah. to A1. It's really getting close. But it's never easy because even here. The queen's protecting a1, yeah. and who knows what's happening. I feel like black should be winning, but it's really not easy to win this. The official time is David has got a mighty four minutes left for the whole game, and Mickey has got 18 and a half minutes. 
Eggie What's the versus time situation here in Eggie? Eggie has only got... Ah, Eggie's got 14 minutes and Keith has got 13 minutes. I'm so curious about that game. It feels like it could still go anyway. Yeah. Like, anything could still happen. It's hard to lose, though. It's true. Yeah. It's hard to lose with one. But it's Eggie. I mean, uh, with, uh, with, with again... We love Eggie. We love Eggie. Like, I wouldn't say this if I didn't know Eggie very well. Good friend of ours. Or of mine, anyway. I wouldn't talk to Good you. Good friend of ours? I love Eggie. Richard Pert is going to be disgusted with this position today. Just completely losing. Nothing to be done. No. Actually, I've just remembered, you know, I was talking about Aggie earlier about how he had this busy just uh, summer playing a lot. And I was actually talking to him while he was playing in Paris. And he was uh, saying to me that he was struggling a bit with converting. He'd had a, good, a few good yeah. positions there and he Happens. had the same problems. So I think if he manages to sort that out, which is always easier said than done. But yeah, I'm very happy to see Eggy do well. And if I'm not being very nice about Eggy, I don't mean it. You're being very nice about it. If he's the one admitting that he's struggling to convert, then there must be some truth in that. And Richard... Uh, Palace of Gormali yeah. has it in a draw. So that means they're both on five. So, and it looks as though Chris Ward is trying his very best to to win this but actually is he getting somewhere maybe Chrissy boy is getting somewhere those knights are dangerous animals they are those springer mm -hmm. yeah may maybe maybe not who knows because here i actually like the move king h6 very much with the idea that I'm keeping this Springer uh, raus. Very right? good. <laughs> right? The Springer So I'm just wondering, really... where, where is the Springer going to spring? Well, if you go here, then I go here. And if you go here, then I go here. And if you go here, I go here. And if you go here, I go here. And if you go here, I just go here. And if you go here... I can probably take. I would be scared now. No. Why? No, I mean as white. As white? Yeah. No, you've got a protected pass ball. Yeah, that's you true. can never lose. That's true. Anyway, that game's slightly not really for the crowd. This one is, though. This one. Queen F2. Now, that might be a good Keith move. move. That looks like a Keith move. A decent one. Okay, so let's just have a look. If I take everything. How do you want to take? Because if you go here... Are you going to trick me? Oops! Oops. Oh, I need to... I've blundered about 20 pieces I today. I do it every day. So Queen F2. So Eggy... What's Eggy going to do? He's going to move his book, I guess, then. Um, where? Yeah, the question is, do you want to keep it Probably on the 6th rank or do you Probably want to keep here. it on the b file? Probably here. And the thing is, is Keith just going to sack uh, and do this? Because this looks mm -hmm. good. But what happened after after King H5? I was wondering, okay, we dropped a pawn with check. What? After King H5. Here? Well, well, now we take the check. Yeah, but then King... King here? Yep. It's too much. No. Advanced H pawn, who knows? Maybe this would, this is what Keith is hoping for. But he needs to get going with his own pawns. Go, fly. Fly, fly my, my pretties. Baby. Fly. What does the chat say? Um, but Paul. Well, yeah, I think Paul might be right about Aggie going over careful. Don't be over... Well, he's played rook b3, Eggy, which... Is over careful? <laughs> no, it makes a lot of sense because yeah, no, he wants to go here. Sense, yep. So after knight g5... You know, I think time could uh, be a major factor in this yeah, game. Yeah, I agree. I think it's going to go down to both players being down to their last minutes and then really anything could happen. You said it's difficult to lose, and I agree, but who it's knows losable. what... Happen, yeah. It's losable, trust me. It's very losable. 
very much so. Um, Mickey yet to play. I mean, what else is there? Let's go down. Let's have a look at some games we never looked at. We never looked at. Okay, let's see. Like who? Dietmar like, Kolbers versus Chris Duncan. Yeah. Your main man, Dietmar. No, Chris is my man. I love Chris. I like Chris. Yeah, Chris is a funny, funny guy. He's a funny guy. He went back here, and Chris is two pawns down. Yeah, I might not have a very fun time to, tonight. Yeah. What about, yeah, John Amps? John he Ames is Gavinning yeah. with either move. Just winning. And that's some players I don't know. William against Kobe. William Claridge Hansen against Kobe Kalavanen. And this looks Gavinning for white. Mm -hmm. Somehow. Pass B, pawn. Some nasty threats. Nasty springen. Nasty springen. Gesprungen. Gonna <laughs> sprung up in him. And that's nasty. And then a bit further down, well, then we really are. They are all, those guys finish early. Uh, Surely yeah, someone must be playing. No. Jeremy Manager versus Wall. Tim Wall. Good old Tim, but you know. Who wants to analyze this ending? That's what no, I want to know. No. Not me. What else have we got? I was gonna go. Keithy and boy played knight g5, allowing queen to d7. And I'd be kind of scared because suddenly I'm getting gamated. Ooh. What is happening? Here? We saw what happened here. Queen d3, rook b8. He took it off. Queen takes b8, king h7. And now. Can I go queen e5 with some checks? Nick so einfach, meine yeah. liebe Freund. Not easy. So now David's there's a real fight and there's a real fight here. Go queen d7. There's no other move. Be active. Hit the rook. You know, keep the queen near the king. Just go queen d7 and ask Keith to defend. Who's saying something? Who's saying now something? Time pressure has generally caused him problems today. Well, it's generally yeah. ge caused him problems uh, for the past 20 years. I mean, that's been his biggest problem in his game. David's time management, much like Peter Wells, much like various others, Alexander Grischuk, yeah. just always gets into time trouble. Um, inevitably, you cannot play as well. So, so what is Eggy thinking about? He has to go. Eggy is thinking about, oh my god, I'm so hungry. I'm looking forward to going to the pub. <laughs> and I'm going to have a Weatherspoons, a JD Weatherspoons dinner. I always thought so, but at the Forenciel, very often we have to wait for Eggy because he hits the gym after the game. Yeah, he's back in shape. Yeah. Eggy, he's, he's a man on a mission. And he's gone Queen D7. Yeah, I mean, there's just no other move here, so... And uh, casual sex, uh, I agree, the whole day has been a bit weird. I've just sat here mostly wondering what on earth is going on. Well, Keith's going to go rook g8, that I'm sure about, because mm -hmm. he wants to cover checks with rook g6. And Eggy is going to go... He's never going to go a4. No, he might go queen d6 check, though. Because now, ch -ch -ch, so you can't go f6. Mm -hmm. And he might take this, and this kind of looks a bit smelly, right? This kind of looks a bit bad, but maybe he's just thinking, okay, one last hurrah with the H pawn. Mm -hmm. I guess this is what I would do. If I can win a pawn, I'm glad he'd take it. Very materialistic. Are you? Mm, yeah. What kind of material things do you... Pawns. Pawns. <laughs> That's good. That's better than some other things. What else is there? Well, there's this key game. So we've got key games on yeah, board one and two here. Yep. So we have to stick around. David has played queen e5. But David is down to two minutes now. No surprise there. But it's not easy for Mickey just to play yeah. moves here. And also, Mickey's got to be conscious of the fact like any check can, you know, potentially 
you know, it, it's easy for David to play a lot of moves, is what I'm trying to say. It's so difficult for us to commentate on this. I mean, this ending queen is endings are so... Ah, they're just incredibly tough. I mean, I, I wouldn't... Honestly, I mean, if you told me to honestly assess this, I would say black can't lose, but I would also say I wouldn't know if it's winning for black. Yeah. You know, so... David's I mean, Black has to worry about a lot of things. He has to worry about the, not allowing any perpetual checks. He has to worry about the sea pawn. It's not so easy. It's really not easy. No. Um, people oh, in Keith the chat. Played H8. I should tell people in the chat that today is the last day you mm. will be here with us. Yeah. So if you people in the chat who are watching us have any questions. Well, Mr. Lawrence Trent, now is your chance. Tomorrow the show will continue with Mr. The show must go on. The <laughs> show must go on, with or without you. Uh, Mr. Niklas Grandmaster Huschenbeet uh, will be here with myself. I'll be watching you. No, I won't. But <laughs> I will. I'll be on a plane. You'll be on a plane. And then when yeah. I come home, I'll check the results. Because tomorrow it's got to be Mickey versus Eggie, right? I mean, this is. Yeah. The game of the tournament. I mean, unless Eggy bungles it completely. Eggy might bungle this. Queen e7 f6. This is. Uh, this is bunglable. Yep. Bunglable. So what? What now? Uh, now I didn't win my pawn. I don't know. Like rook b7 maybe. The h pawn is suddenly looking. Yeah. The so... problem is that I want to mate you. Yeah. But you've got this. Who knows this, this, check, you have to come back, and this. I, I don't know what's going to... Yeah. I, I, I think we should just watch a bit like a, a, a film, you know, or a piece of art. Just yeah. watch it and just see what Maybe happens. we can talk about people in the this? chat have started talking about the Sinkfield Cup, where you off to. Sinkfield Cup, yeah. Any predictions? Well, Fabiano is going to win it. <laughs> um... Which day is first round? First round fifth. is yeah. Fifth. So on because of the time difference, it's here. It's in the Friday evening. Right. If you're in the UK, it's seven p.m. If you're Central Europe, eight p.m. Right. So. <laughs> Kevin Winter has a non-sarcastic question, Lawrence. What will you actually be doing at the tournament? Well, um, got a number of uh, meetings planned. We've got a lot of media stuff that we're doing, uh, some really positive stuff, social media stuff and general media. Um, got some other commercial opportunities lined up. So that's what I do. And of course, I'm there as a support for Fabiano, make sure he has got everything he needs. Um, every day we see him, we help him prepare. Mm -hmm. I'll be his personal gym buddy as well so he so you're gonna say slave not personal slave but you know it's a big tournament and i'll just make sure yeah. he's there that everything is in order and so he can play the best chess what did you make of the withdrawal of uh, vladimir kramnik it's um it's sad to see mm. big vlad pull out for health reasons but you know if you have to you have to and peter Svidler is an excellent replacement and i look yeah. forward to seeing mr Svidler. i'm very curious to see how maxime is going to do he did ex excellently I, in i'm not <laughs> <him. laughs> no he's playing extremely yeah. well he's playing extremely well but i mean dortmund was a very strong tournament but mm. we this really is the top top yeah without magnus i without, mean i mean apart from magnus and big flood everyone is there yeah pretty much so it'd be interesting to see if he can carry his form well let's let's see if he carries his form and in the howl game we've got check Ooh. and this is interesting if you block with the queen here as mickey can you just take take here here, here. and then we get another and queen then we ending. get another <laughs> queen ending where but this one i really feel should be close to a draw because yeah White's king is active and his pawn is much more advanced. So I would be quite confident in saying that's probably a draw. Um, and if he doesn't do that, king g8. 
c6 from queen e check who knows what's going to happen but, yeah. who knows i really don't know i hope that answered some questions yeah we've got a lot of stuff going on a lot a lot of stuff Very but this in st louis and then there isn't really anything until the olympia well, St. Louis everyone. ends on the 15th, 16th, yeah. so that's kind of so there's two. just two weeks. And then yeah. it's the Olympiad, and then it's... Tell us, do you have any insider knowledge on the World Championship match? Nope. Just nothing. I'm, I think nobody has. Yeah. Um, why doesn't Rapport get elite tournament invitations when he's the best junior in the world? So actually a very good question. I think he should get more invitations. I think he gets... He had a match recently, and... He, I remember he's played in Beale, and but he should, hopefully, in the next cycle, because you've got to remember a lot of these invitations are sent out mm. with with time, that he does get into it because he's a very exciting yeah. player. Very. It feels like a very closed, you know, kind of small it's circle, cliquey, and yeah. it's hard to get in. It's hard to get in, yeah. um, but that's also you could say the the challenge. Not the challenge as such, but that's the um, that's the reward you get mm. for getting in the top ten, right? Yeah. That you get the invitations. Question, Lawrence, will Fabi be playing Tata Steel Masters in January? Uh, no comment at this moment in time. Um, I agree that inviting some other players, some young players, Wei Yi, um, Ding Liren will be in uh, St. Louis. Um, People like Rapport and Harry Krishna. Yes, I think uh, I think you could definitely um, invite these guys and yeah. it would make the tournament very interesting. And I think Paul has a very good point here. I can't see everything, but yeah. I agree, Paul. I also think Keith's going to panic Ooh, Aggie with an H-pawn push. Yeah, I mean, if Keith is going to play H4 100% because this exchange here does not help Eggy. At all. Suddenly his King unlosable H5. position becomes yeah. anything but unlosable. This is basically Eggy's big danger and he's slipping. He's slipping H4. And then to play another rook move here is really yeah. difficult. Keith could win this. Uh, do I help Fabi with opening prep or just day-to-day -day stuff? Um, I don't really help him with his prep that much, although I might give my... Um, advice as to what kind of game he should be getting because I'm quite good at at that at the actual general preparation but he's got his coach and he of course does his more precise lines with with Rustam and uh, I, I help him out more with the day-to-day -day things we've got a lot of media stuff this year and a lot of admin and a lot of commercial stuff so it's good good things are happening um, What else we got? What else have we got? What's uh, the next game that's still going on? Let's go back to maybe um, see if uh, Chris Ward's making any progress. Chris Ward, okay. Let's see. Chris Ward, Wardy Ward. Mm, maybe. Because May now, somehow, this pawn is now on A6. I don't know how that happened, but now Chris has got a, a way in, and this could just be losing. I don't know what after knight g3, why on earth would you play a6 here? I don't know, maybe there's some Zooks ones that I'm not aware of, but it looks very committed to do that. And now the king has got a square on b6. So now Chris has got a great chance to convert this. So, you know, knight h5, the king comes back, the king comes in. And I see Richard Pert, I'm not sure we mentioned that already, but he, he did lose he against lost, Martin yeah. Brown. Yeah, that's going to be a very disappointing. Something like this is probably just winning because the knight can come round, yeah. you've got c6 breaks. Might just be winning. So congratulations to Chris if he does win this because, yeah, and Keith, of course he's going to play h4. Yeah. And now, now is the time to panic if yeah, you're an Eggleston especially fan. especially five minutes. Now is the time to panic because... If you're an Eggy fan, yeah. it could get very out of control. By the way, David Howard is playing excellently. He played c6 here. And he's not worried about this because it's not mate, but it is a draw. 
by force because you cannot block because can you block huh. can you do this block takes do we get another queen and d6 g5 e5 g4 e6 uh, we get an ending like this but this but is must be a draw. must be a draw because um, there's the just a lot of checks and and this pawn is not advanced and we're getting it ladies and gentlemen well actually something else happened c6 queen b5 check okay king d6 there was an exchange c7 a1 queen and king h7 wow and now we've got this position to deal with well, we have two wonderful two pawns less on the board um <laughs> And David played. What? That move doesn't make any sense. Oh, it does make sense. King d5. I guess you don't want to allow. He wants to get the king yeah. back, basically. So if if black starts making some random checks, you know, and the king starts mm -hmm. walking back, actually yeah. it becomes a lot more difficult. So here, Mickey. Maybe you should just get going. Start rolling the guy up the board. And what did Aggie do? He just played rook c6. Yeah, this is probably a decent move because mm -hmm. um, now he's threatening queen takes e5 and there's no queen takes b6. So black has to take time out to defend this pawn. Uh, rook e8 is possible, but you could just hit the rook. So... I, have to, I, I haven't been so King curious H5. about wow. the game in a long time. Wow. King h5. This is also a very thematic move by Keith. He wants to just bring the king in, basically, and he, he his pieces are going to protect the king. This is great stuff by Keith. I'm kind of concerned for Eggy. Me too. I'm concerned. And then, as I predicted, they're now... Well, it wasn't very hard to predict, but they are now both down to five minutes. Yeah. And Eggy plays queen e7. That might be a very decent move, Mr. Eggleston, with the idea of rook takes f6. But black has got counter chances now. But at least here you can block and... Oof. All three results, really. I've got no idea how this is going to go at the moment. But you know what I think? I think we're going to be in here for a long time tonight. With no, we're this not. ending. Firstly, David. I've got a plane to catch. Secondly... <laughs> <laughs> if you think I'm going to analyze a queen and queen versus pawn ending, you are mad. I think this game is. What's the time situation in David's game? David has got about two minutes, and Mickey's got about seven mm -hmm. minutes. So, not easy at all. I don't know. Two very difficult positions to. Um, to try and evaluate yeah. Keith with four and a half minutes or so. And what is he going to do here, Keith? What is Keith going to do here? Well, if he doesn't counterattack... He's not going to go King G6. Can he defend? How can he even defend? He can do it with King G6, but that's just not a Keith. But now we have again this... Yeah, I know, mm -hmm. but, uh, you know... Uh -huh. This guy is Scary. very, very fast. Yeah. Probably I would go here, actually, and lose, because <laughs> I'm so scared of this guy. I'd want to do this and just put a bishop here, and then I would just lose. <laughs> so, oh my god, he did defend the pawn. Rook h6. Whoa. Eggie. Eggie, Eggie. Eggie's not going to find the computer line. Okay, so show us the computer line. The computer line. line is just madness. Check here. Gives a check, and if the king goes back to h5, the point is you can go play the very subtle bishop b3 with the idea of mating with bishop d1, and that's just not going to happen ever. He has, I say ever, he's given the first check, so <laughs> he's going to give the second check. And why can't... Is Eggy going to do it for the fans? He's got to see this at the end. That's actually quite easy, yeah? I'm never underestimating Eggy again. He's going to find this. 
That's why we love Eggy. We love, we love What's Eggy. What's happening in the chat? Are Let's the have fans a look at the chat. going the chat, wild? The, the, the fans are going mad. This game has been full of blunders, but it's understandable because it's just such a difficult position. Question here is, do, what do I know about this kid, Paramag Sudalu? Some fantastic performance recently. Believe it or not, the Iranian kid, he's gaining about 60 points on the next yeah. list. He's rated 2,500 already. No, I spoke to Nigel Short. Nigel thinks that if he had openings, he'd be the real deal. Mm. He'd be the je ne sais quoi. Mm -hmm. He's a coach then. Needs he's someone to work with on his openings. I don't know, but if he had some... And Eggy played Queen C8 check. Hold on. Eggy, Eggy, Eggy. <laughs> the problem the is Eggy fans are coming out. If you come Jack's here, move. there's a check and then another rook move. So check. So you have to go uh, back. And then the computer just wants to come back to our line. I'm still, until the game's over, I don't know what's going to happen. It ain't over until it's over. Mickey has moved a pawn, but my king is a lot closer now. So, par example. I always wonder when uh, David finds the time to use the bathroom during a game. Because once he... Move forward, it probably. Yeah, very quickly. Then come back during 15 minutes and then be the time travel all over again. I don't know what he's going to do. He's got one minute. I think maybe less now. David's got well, yeah, one minute in this position now. He can exchange queens here because takes takes is actually winning for white, which would be a shocker. A shocker. So he can play queen e6. And also with queen e6, you do threaten queen g6 check. So you could play a move like queen g2. Right, which would make sense. And then the it's tricky to mm -hmm. because there are a lot of I mean there are a lot of endings where But at least now uh, Yeah, but look I've controlled the only square you've yeah, got as yeah, a check. I mean, that's what I say. So I mm. probably need to play if Keith played King G three. What's going on after here? He wants to go knight f three because he can't move King F four, Queen F five is Shachmat. And king down is here. So he's put the knight on f3. And where's the finish? Queen g8. The king goes to h2. And then queen g7 simply. And I just eat this pawn and then you're pinned. Ooh, Eggy. Eggy. Yeah, he's played and queen g8. He's played it. He's played queen g8. It was the only winning move as well. Yeah. Eggy's a, Eggy's a god. King h2, queen g7 is just really strong. And notice how the white king is just you know, <laughs> nice and None safe. None of this funny Jan pushing you a pawn business. But you know, this is going to continue. Takes king g2. Yeah. And Eggy is winning, but I don't know. If this pawn were here, I would be worried. But he's got a couple of ideas. So basically what the computer wants to do is play bishop b3. Yeah, he would just, well, basically, this and bishop's not working. Bring the bishop to d1. Because that. Yeah. That would just be. <laughs> pretty. Pretty, pretty, pretty. Where are the Eggy fans? Where are the Eggy fans? We need an Eggy fan club. And a Mickey Adams fan club. This looks horrendous for David because after check, check here, and the H pawn goes. Mm -hmm. Don't know what you're doing because you can never play f6 because yeah. it always runs into a check. Take. I think Mickey's going to win. I think we're going to get a Mickey Eggy. I think it's <laughs> written in the stars. Mickey versus Eggy. Are you going Eggie. to cancel your flight? No. To comment on this game it's of Mickey the century. Versus Eggie. Mickey versus Eggy. Mickey versus Eggy. Um. Chris J. Ward, Chris G. Ward is completely gavinning. He's got two pawns mm -hmm. and this guy is... Impressive technique. Yeah, so Chris will also be on five and a half. So tomorrow what we're going to get, I believe, if Eggy converts, we're going to get Mickey versus Eggy on board one. Mm -hmm. And on board two, we're going to get 
Dave. Gawain with white. No, because Gawain has got half a point more. Oh, yeah, of course. Gawain will play... Gawain will play... Chris Ward on board two. And then we're going to get Nicholas Pert playing... Somebody like the top guy, on, top guy on five, David, or something like that, mm -hmm. on board three. Okay, so let's see the time situation again. David Eggleston, five and a half. Keith yeah, is getting David, very short yeah, now. David's got one minute, but I mean, the problem is with David's position. Is it slot? Is that just H4? Yeah. It's just, there's just nothing to do here. He's going to try something to just play a check, but it's... Oh, Eggy didn't take on F6. Eggy! Ah, oh, he just wants to win a piece. Mm -hmm. That's kind of sensible. That's that's kind of sensible. That's egg What's tastic. happening in the chat? chat? In the chat, what we got? We got... Eggy. Eggy. We got a lot of shout-outs of Eggy. Uh, and that looks just... Oh, I mean... Keith is going to fight on somehow, like this, but... Now I just want to sacrifice uh, my bishop, yeah. somehow. But this is just... Um, I mean, even if I sacrifice my rook... No, you're going to have to. I mean, I yeah, can yeah, force yeah. you to, but look yeah. at this. This is domination yeah. Nation and the pawns just mm -hmm. run and run and run and Eggy has seen this of course so yeah. he is going to take on f3 and that will be pretty much the end of Keith's challenge to the th to the crown this year. What about Eggy? That's incredible. Eggy is just having the tournament of his life and might only need a draw for a GM. Or... Yeah, definitely. I mean, he will play Mickey tomorrow. Uh, and the draw will definitely be enough. I'm yeah. even I'm even wondering if you can lose both games and possibly. I mean, uh, just to make it clear, we're talking about nine round norms again. Of course, he can also score. Even if he loses two, he can still score a norm. Ten round norm or eleven. Yeah. Round norm. Absolutely. Absolutely. David Howe did play Queen C two, but this is just not enough for David now. I don't think a lot of players are going to go h3 because they'll have to check. But maybe you just go here, you calculate this and you say, easy peasy lemon squeezy. No. But now he didn't. Queen yeah, Mickey played the five. very very human move. And Eggy did take on f3. Of course Eggy took on f3. Of course Eggy took on f3. And now how long has Keith got? He can't have, oh, Keith has got no time. Keith has just got no time, apparently. So... Did Keith lose on time? Well, his position is lost anyway now because yeah. Eggy's just going to take. What if I defend? What if I play rook g6? Yeah, it's just too slow. Too slow, yeah. Okay, let's try king g2. Have to try something. It's the same. So you're saying it doesn't make a difference that you still have an f6 pawn at all? Yeah. You can't even go back to g8, so mm. just too fast. Just yep. doesn't the f pawn doesn't place basically. So that game has stalled, and then David has played king e4, and any move, any move should win. David's got thirty eight seconds. And uh, yeah, we'll see the f f finales of these games before we log out. I should we can quickly report back with Chris G Ward because Some Chris mighty G. Pawns. Look at these guys yeah. flying up the board. F seven is just uh, Kav Kavining. King d6, and I can also just take this. Mm -hmm. And you can't get to my pawns. And that is Gavinning. And so Chris, sorry, I forgot to say, Chris will be on five and a half. 
So that means so it will actually be Adams. Eggie. It's going to be Adams versus Eggie. It's going to be uh, um, Chris against Gawain. It's going to be no Gawain. But Nick will also be on five. And yeah. Nine. So Gawain is due white, and Nick is due. It might be Gawain versus Nick, and then it might be um, something like David. David versus Chris. Or it'll be something like Lawrence the pairing Danny experts. Dormali versus Chris. <laughs> something like that. Anyway, Eggy actually being the sick man he is, just went bishop f5, which is really cute as well. And now rook g3, rook takes f6. He's controlling this square. This yeah. is just resigns actually now for, for Keith. There's not really much more he can hope for in this position. Um, Bishop e6 was just a nice uh, touch. And Keith has Keith, one minute, but I guess he will resign now. Yeah, I think Keith is resigning because this was a very uh, just up and down. Topsy turvy yeah, game. Yeah, yeah, it was just mad. Yeah. In the uh, Hal Adams game, things are getting worse for David, and Mickey just has to find a kind of way to not like Queen g2 would be a disaster because mm. that would run into perpetual. So Mickey just has to find a way to avoid perpetual and Gavin. And Keith just played uh, King G2, but I don't really see what that's going to do. What, King G2, Rook, anywhere? I can Even. just go to H3. Yeah, you can't just go to H3. I mean, that's just symbols. Yeah. Symbols. Yeah. So it's really about this game now. And what's uh, Michael Adams... And he just played queen h5. Queen h5. That's a very sensible move. Now the black king, the white black white queen, has to go passive. And now you can make it even more passive. Queen f3 with the idea of queen g2. Ooh. Queen f3 by Mickey would really be the uh, end of the. And I guess he will play it. Of course. It's a fairly obvious. He played queen h4, obviously. That's uh, apparently not the best move. But probably good, good enough. enough. But uh, does allow this queen c2 again with f6 check. Oh, queen endings are just never easy. And Aggie did play the simple rook h3. Keith defending his pawn, but... Yeah, but uh, now there's just no... Yeah, nothing. Nothing to be done. Just a4, b4. Yeah. Get those guys rolling. Eggy might even play bishop yeah. f5. <laughs> yeah, but the problem is that just does, runs into rook h5, and it's kind of like, what's the point? Just go a4. There's no threat. a4, yeah. f5. I just take. It's just nothing to be done. Mm. And the crowd are shouting, Eggy, Eggy. <laughs> the crowd are railing for Eggy. What's the chat saying? Eggy for GM. He will be a GM. He needs to get his rating up, though. That's half the job. David Howe running out of moves. He played Queen C2. Yeah. At least he found Queen C2, you know. So now uh, maybe the idea is that he, the problem is if you go check, that is just a maha mahusive blunder because the king gets back and, <gasps> well, might not happen. Keith is trying on rook h5. He's got one last punt. But even that, e5, f5, you can just take. Because I even queen my pawn first with a gazillion checks and just simples. Simples! What's Mickey Adams going to do here after queen c2? He's thinking. He might play king h6, but he might not. It's never easy. It's never easy. Why is Eggy not moving his pawns? Oh, Keith has just gone. He's gone for this. H3 takes. Yeah, he's just way too slow. He's just too slow. Rook h3, rook h3, king h3, a5, f5, a6, fe4, a7, queen. 
That's all she wrote. And Keith is going to be very disappointed, yeah. but... I mean, know, I really don't understand his opening choice today. I, his opening was just bad. Yeah. I don't know why he's not. He's going to have to do some work. Queen G5 played by Michael Adams. I mean, I think in a way it's fine. It's served him well enough to not do, you know, crazy opening work. But if, if you don't do opening work, then don't play the open Sicilian against Eggy. Yeah. It's just, I can't understand it. Queen F2 played by... And now... But there is a check. But he'll see it's just one check. So yeah. G6 is actually just really simple. Yeah. G6 just wins. I think both these games are going to finish yeah. now within yeah. like a minute or two. Aggie's pawn has made it all the way to A6. Yeah. Yeah, it's going to end. So, hope you've enjoyed the show today, ladies and gentlemen. Assuming, of course, G6 is played by. Um, and it is on the board. Yeah. And this is now just very, very difficult for Davy Boy to even continue here. Um, Noted that David Sarah seemed to says, be under the weather. Yeah, Which David? David? Probably David, David Howe. Howe yeah. yeah. He might be a bit under the weather. It doesn't help. Um, G6, King, D4. So. Mr. Dodgy is saying Eggy is up 55. Sure. No, that's not. It's half that. It'll be half because he's been over 2,400. So Eggy will be gaining because the system just recognizes the ELO for what it is. So Eggy is going to be gaining whatever that is, 50, 20 plus points. No, performing amazing. Yeah. Beating Hebden, beating Ems and Arkle. It's like Undecent. destroying yeah. the the best of the English weekend circuit in the 80s. You know, Mark Hebden, Arkle, Ems, all gone. Drawn with Gormally, drawn with Jones. Six out of seven. David Eggleston. The game is over, What a course. tournament. The game is over and Eggy wins. And poor Key means that he was having a great uh, little run. That said, he lost to David, beat Asanov. Keith is now, you know, he's basically out of the running, um, especially if Mickey is going to win this. Um, but we've got one of those endings where David's going to give a lot of checks. Thing is, there aren't many. But there, there aren't that many. There aren't that many, but it will. And Mickey did take with the queen on yeah. f5. Queen h4 check, Mickey will go king g7. David will probably give another check. Mickey will block. And the problem is there are no more checks. So you have yeah. to come here or something. And then you can give a check. And go h2. And basically, yeah, there are just a million ways for this queen mm. never to be able to check. Yeah. And, uh, yeah, and David's going to That resign. will be it. So maybe let's uh, have a quick look at the standing. So, um... Two leaders after seven rounds taking it, assuming uh, Mickey Adams is going to wrap the, this up in a second. So two leaders, Mickey Adams and David Eggleston. On the Eggster. The Eggster. <laughs> on six out of seven. And they are followed by who? Gawain Jones, then Nicholas Then there'll be Pert. Gawain Jones, Nicholas Pert and Chris Ward all on five and a half. And then a big group on five. And then we'll have how... Gormali, Tan, Palliser, Colbus, Martin Brown, shout out to Martin Brown, rated only 22.52, yeah. gaining 30 rating points. Good result for him today, beating Richard Pert. Marcus Osborne, also rated only 22.44, doing very well, beating Fodor today. And then on four and a half, we've got Ems, Some Arco, big names as well. Wells. Wells, um, having played Mickey... Having played Mark Hebden and having played Gormali, despite being on just four and a half out of seven, is still gaining a mm -hmm. good ten rating points. And Yovi is even gaining despite her loss today. Peter Bachelor, we've got here the young Peter Bachelor. Then we've got the young William Claridge Hansen. Charlie Story. We had Mike Waddington, who's gaining a whopping sixty-seven points. 
this tournament. Impressive. We won today against David Coleman. Great story for him. Mark Hebden on just four out of seven. Tamash Fodor as well. Mark yeah. is just struggling, along with Tamash Fodor, along with Richard Pert, who's have all fallen by the wayside. So very sad times for some of these players. And uh, be an interesting day tomorrow, but Egion, six out of seven, is really just a yeah. story in itself. Great performance. <clears throat> in this game, we've got King G6 on the board, but it's really <clears throat> Queen B7 played by David. But there's not really much to discuss here. There's not really <clears throat> any checks, any hope. Yeah. yeah, someone's asking why David hasn't resigned. I guess, first of all, I think you're always disgusted, no matter what happens, if you lose after five hours. Even, I mean, even if you've been outplayed, you just, you don't like playing chess for five hours and losing. This and then... loss for Keith will hurt a lot. And it's not only playing for so long, it's just being in that position in the tournament. You know, he, he, he will think he is favourite against Eggleston with black. I was and talking about David. But <laughs> oh, you were talking about David? <laughs> yeah, someone was Sorry. asking why, da why David I... hasn't resigned. Oh, why hasn't David resigned? First of all, he's Sorry. discussed that they are so short on time. And just like, especially if you're down on 30 seconds, you've been playing on 30 seconds for most of the game. You just keep making moves, I think. Of course he realises he's completely lost, but just... King h5, king e3 mm -hmm. on the board. Now David can, uh, sorry, Mickey can just uh, push if he wants. He can also just go, probably he can just go g4 as well with a very clear conscience. Mickey can just do, just do anything because the king is just yeah. coming in and it runs out of checks and it's all over. So. And Chris Ward, let's just confirm, he did win, right? Chris Ward did win. Yeah. And but it's been a very interesting day, I have to say. Some great day. interesting games, some yes. fighting games, some uh, situation. How do you say a return of situation? No. Situations have been Don't know what turned you're trying upside to say. down. Yeah, there have been some reverse. <laughs> yeah, there have been some interesting moments like that. Yeah. Um and H two by Mickey and he wants to play Queen H3. And you know what is Check. very good? We're going to finish just in time for people to take a quick break, grab a bite to eat, yeah. use the bathroom, and then come back 20 minutes from now for the one and only Jan Gustafsson, who is not going to play a banter blitz tonight, but a banter bullet. bullet. Yeah, and he's going to get crushed because <laughs> he is a very weak bullet player. Queen h1 on the board, queen f4 by Mickey, king will go to wherever, d3. And I suppose David can play, again, any move, king h4, king g4. I think I'd play this move, bring my king to g3, king's on e2. Maybe he can even go g4 now with the yeah. idea of queen f3 check. And that, I think, will seal really it. That is really it. That is really going to be it. Eggy had us all worried, it's true. <laughs> we were worried about Eggy because he had such a beautiful position and Keith got... I mean, very it. close to the end, it was suddenly very unclear and then yeah. Keith blundered with... Well, he blundered with what looked like natural moves and Eggy just played yeah. like a genius. So, sometimes, you know, Eggy, don't count out the eggster. David Howe, how long has he got? Not long, one minute. I think he might give another check. What he might do is give a check, give a check, and then realize after this that any check is blocked by check. And anything else is just check and I make a new queen and that's gonna be all she wrote. So David probably contemplating resignation now. I'm very disappointing for David. This was really yeah. a tournament for him to get back into the saddle but um 
you know, shouldn't be too disheartened. He's not, he's still going to be, well, more or less not losing rating. He did give a check, just one last spin of the dice. King will come to h4, queen d8 and king g3 is just child's play for Mickey. And uh, Mickey will be gaining some points. He'll be gaining... Yeah, I was saying before the tournament... Um, it's hard to gain points if you're yeah. Mickey Adams. I was saying it's going to be very interesting to see how Mickey is doing because he doesn't play against this sort of opposition, especially the first few rounds all too often. And we see different stories. Uh, for example, Nakamura doing very well winning mm. Gibraltar, Magnus winning Qatar, but then Anand, for example, having right. a very tough time in Gibraltar. Right. So, interesting. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But Mickey seems to be handling the situation very well. well so Mickey's far. probably played more opens than somebody yeah. like Vichy. So um, I think has David. He's given the last check for the fans. Queen the eight, and now King into G three. And that really is all she wrote. Or King, just King anywhere. But King G three is just yeah, he so has natural. And I think King. David can now resign with a clear conscience. So, great stuff, ladies and gentlemen. Um, it's been an absolute pleasure. Uh, sad that I'm not going to be here tomorrow, but you'll have lovely Fiona. With Grandmaster with Nicholas Grandmaster Huschenbet. Nicholas Huschenbet. And you will have the game of the tournament so <laughs> far. Mickey versus Eggy. It's the one that before the tournament started, everybody thought was going to be the crucial game of the tournament. And can Eggy defeat Mickey with the black pieces? That would what be. <laughs> a story that would be. Um, Mickey's big favourite, of course. And then after that, we're going to have, I believe, either... Well... Depends on colours as well. Gawain probably was we're going to get Gawain versus Chris Ward. And then we'll get Nick probably playing somebody like David. If they've not played already. And David did just resign. Yeah. So we're going to leave you. Have a great evening. It's been great. Thank you to everybody in the chat. Don't forget to tune in to Jan, of course. 15 minutes from now. 15 minutes. Jan goes have some banter bullet. Don't miss that. If you're a premium member, you'll be able to play him. If you're not a premium member, become one and you'll be able to play him. It's that simple. For me, it's good night. Have fun. Enjoy the next few days. See and you soon. I'll see you tomorrow. Bye-bye.